Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm supposed like a take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate it. they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the I'm the one. Okay, so we rarely do podcasts on Saturday morning, but when we get one of these uh, Wall Street elites from BlackRock that show up, <laughs> we, we kind of can't miss out on that opportunity, right? I mean, when, we, when I was told, when I was told the great Tim Dillon is coming on Saturday, I said, forget about it. Last night, I get back chaperone for Dilly, late night, midnight, we get back. I said, we got to figure out what's going on with BlackRock. We got to figure out what's going on with this uh, rebuilding the private the, equity side. Yeah. I mean, land. listen, the whole story about when I'm reading about this, you know, some people, you know, you, you hear and part time comedian, apparently, and, and you hear these stories and think about it, as a part time comedian, you yeah. become one of the best in the world. Yeah. You're touring in the States, in yep. Europe. You got a big ass podcast. You're l- everybody I ask about this uh, private equity guy here today. <laughs> Everybody, and I mean everybody, it's not a lot of people, it's 100%. Yeah. Everybody loves you. Uh, and then aside from that, you know, some of us uh, who, uh, you know, we try to do our best in our in life and you try to pay your bills and you, you, you want to have a good life, you want to live a decent life. How many comedians you know that, you know, have a house in Austin, have a house in uh, the, what's the slums of not oh. India the slums of uh, the city LA it's in uh, well, Hollywood Hills Hollywood, uh, Hollywood oh, Hills horrible. and by the way name me one comedian that can say all that and they have an estate not a house in the Southamptons not a house not a house got it got not it. a house and a state in Southamptons yeah. <laughs> connected with Hampton. all these BlackRock people we want to get to the bottom of it today with that being said the great yeah. Tim Dillon is in the house <laughs> thank you so much I love I love um, I love investing uh, and I love uh, you know I love opportunities wherever they are wherever they are if we're built you know whatever we're building you don't discriminate I don't discriminate you know, if it. we're doing an amusement park in the Ukraine wouldn't it be nice to have yeah. one no. I think it would be nice oh my and God. you'll see one and you will absolutely you will understand that war in many many years when you see what we will create there and you will go, oh, okay. And hopefully it's nice. <laughs> I ho- hope it. Hopefully it's lovely. <laughs> if it's not tacky. I, hopefully it's nice <laughs> and it's well done. And mm-hmm. that's all we can hope. You know. Yeah. Did you see the number? Did you see how much they they're saying? The, uh, BlackRock. These yeah. guys got oh. the contract. Chase. Yeah. Got the contract. Four hundred and ten billion dollars yeah. to rebuild. Yeah. Already. Ukraine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the whole thing. I think people were, you know, initially kind of, you know, hoping for some type of peace agreement or negotiation. And, and I mean, people meaning the citizens of the country, not the people, not BlackRock. But that has been discouraged at every turn by the U.S., unfortunately. Right. Every time there looks like there's some opening, Tony Blair goes over from the U.K. or our State Department goes over. Boris we Johnson. seem to be uh, that Tony Blair, Boris Johnson. Yes. I apologize. We seem to be discouraging, and that can only mean to me that we have a beautiful project planned. Mm -hmm. A marina, townhouses, uh, commercial real estate, like whatever we, Mm -hmm. whatever BlackRock has cooked up, it's not nothing. It can't be nothing because we've avoided an end to this war at every stage. We've avoided it because we want, uh, you know, and also you got to remember the Ukraine they call it the breadbasket of Europe, right? So a lot of farmland, a lot of grain. We're all that's all been promised to U.S. corporations too. A lot of it. So oh. it's a, it's a, it sounds like you're on the inside. You know this kind of stuff, and it's, well, it's great to get it from directly from uh, folks well, who are dealing yeah. with these guys. It's like getting stock How tips did, from like Nancy yeah. Pelosi. We got to be positive. <laughs> we got to be positive about it. Yeah. Too many people are negative totally. about I war. Agree. Mm-hmm. We got to be positive about right. war. Because at the end of the day, it's like it's it helps business, right? It helps lots of things, right? And that's what uh, a way of looking at it. <laughs> it's well, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. You know, why was I bitching while yeah. living what? in Iran? You know what? Right. I was negative yeah. about it. Because that's you know, right. It's a different perspective. Pat, you're so you negative on the bombings of Saddam Hussein in 1996. Maybe that's why over. we needed Tim today to give us perspective on yeah. war. Because think yeah. about it: the missiles they got, they yeah. got to build the missiles, the cars, the tanks, the uniforms, the bullets. Big business. Still got work to do, mm-hmm. man. It's you got a lot. You got to yeah. wake up. I mean, it's great to see these little, you know, fledgling companies like BlackRock, yeah. State Street, Vanguard, and yeah. they get in bed with the Lockheed Martins of the world and the Boeings of the world, yeah. and they're building 
theme parks in Ukraine, yeah. Dylan oh. World. It's going to be great. I love it. It's going to be interesting to see for sure. By the way, did you see, in, uh, this yeah. is slightly off topic, I wonder actually now that you're saying this, what it's actually going to end up looking like. Did oh. you see what China did to that one city that they made it look like Champs-Élysées yeah. and Paris? Have you never seen no. this? Put China turns a city into Paris. <laughs> China turns a city yeah. into yeah. Paris. Okay, and uh, uh, just go to images, Rob. Uh, matter of fact, that's the site, the one you went to. Mm -hmm. That's the site you went to. Click on that first one and you, uh, check this out. Are you serious? Out. Yeah, yeah. That's this, in China. So yeah. if you look at the city, go a little lower, go a little lower. Let's see. Yeah, that's not that's not that's not France, by the way. No, yeah, it's so that's Chinese China. Okay, so that's exactly the replica they build in this city. Okay, and what is this city called, Rob? There's a there's a is that name to this city. Buckingham Palace they built as well over How there. China launched a yeah. billion dollar Paris dupe with Eiffel Tower and French architecture, and why it became a ghost town. Yeah. Well, these are one of their ghost cities or ghost yeah, towns they got that a they lot built of, up, and we've seen what's going on with Tian, Evergrande. Yeah. Tianju Ducheng, Tian Ducheng, an easy name to pronounce. So Tian Ducheng even boasts Parisian well, walkways, cafes, <laughs> parks. <laughs> But signage. I mean, but you know, the French are assholes, so he's probably like, listen, stay yeah. here, go to the Eiffel Tower, you don't got to deal with the French, take the photos, mm -hmm. who gives a shit, just tell your friends it, that you were there. It didn't yeah. work, for you, we're going to see how it happens in Ukraine. Well, they're going to do it, they're going to do it, you know, and uh, we're just going to, you know, we'll watch it happen. Are you on the inside where you're thinking about, like, buying a penthouse there or something like that, like, maybe, I like, for vacation? At, I look all the time, yeah. because I, I just love real estate, I think it's funny, and <laughs> I, I love looking at it all over the world, exactly. right? I think it's great, and I, I do look at it in the Ukraine. <laughs> Think about it, like it's like the perfect view of the border. Like you yeah. can actually report on what's going on, oh, do a yeah. podcast with a backdrop. Well, I look at it yeah. in the Ukraine. There are houses for sale right now in the Ukraine, obviously. And there's, you know, you can get a realtor on the phone. You can talk to them. And, you know, obviously there's a language barrier, but they will sell you a house. Mm -hmm. They will sell you a house there. <laughs> you know, have, 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 that, that's the thing. And that's what's great about real estate agents. I mean, I, I've said nasty things about them. They're the scum of the earth. And. They're the worst people in the world, <laughs> yeah. but but they will sell you a home. They don't care. There will be you will hear the sounds of fighting in the background. You'll hear bombs in the background. And how they, do you overcome that objection? You've been in mortgages before, oh, so yeah. overcome that objection. So 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 I ask it's you, dynamic. you're a realtor. I say yeah. I say, yeah. as a, but listen, I'm a little concerned. I have four kids. Of course, this this bombing our kids, two year olds, not going to go to sleep. How do you yeah. overcome that? Well. There's no denying, Mr. Bet David, this is a dynamic environment. Right. Mm -hmm. And we tend to think it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think what you are going to find living here yeah. is that uh, there's going to be a big influx of investment coming here from a lot of Western countries. And you are buying at the bottom. This is what you have to look at it as. This is a great investment. You are buying at, and then it will be a cover. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then they'll, they'll, but you, you are, you know, yeah. technically that is the, that is the game there. They go, you know, the U S and Russia are going to fight. It'll be a stalemate. Russia might give up. They might not care anymore. The U S is going to flood it with money. The Western countries will flood it with money. And yeah. then you're going to, you know, you're going to have a, an investment in a, maybe a NATO country who knows down the road. I don't think so. I tend to think that Russia is going to stick it out there and, um, we're going to give up. And I already think the Ukrainians are starting, you know, they're all a little black pill now because the Ukrainians are actually starting to say, wait a minute, what happened? Mm -hmm. We thought America was going to be our partner for years and years mm -hmm. and years and years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think a lot of people are questioning, you know, is the Ukraine going to be a permanent column in the defense department budget every single year? And what is the end game? And the domestic politics are shifting. And I think, you know, Israel and Gaza now, this is a, a, a thing I don't think, uh, you know, we're going to stick with them for the rest of the term. We are going to probably, uh, I think this aid package is still stalled from still my understanding. In the yeah. House. It passed in the you Senate. Mean, you mean the border stalled. turn, yeah. basically the hell right. with the border, just Ukraine, the border yeah. and Ukraine. The thing with Do you America, think that's even going to pass any of the foreign aid, uh, any of it? I, I don't know. I don't have the insight into whether it will or not. I do think that uh, amongst people, the thing about being a comedian is you go around the country, meet all different people. You talk to a lot of different people. Um, people don't understand what's going on and they feel like they're not getting the full story. And when like Kamala Harris goes, uh, a bigger country has invaded a smaller country. <laughs> and that's the way the vice president of the United States has chosen to frame this. She goes, Russia is a bigger country. And they invaded Ukraine, and that's a smaller country, <laughs> and that's wrong. And she's explaining it 
like she would explain it to a two or a three year old. Now, no matter what you think about the war, there's a tremendous context. There's a historic context. There's a relationship between Russia and Ukraine. There are things that have been going on there since 2014. There's been fighting there. There's been problems in the northern, you know, in the Donbass region, in those areas. And, you know, we've gotten very little information here other than the absolute right thing to do is to give Ukraine money, which I think initially everybody agreed with, like, let's help the Ukraine until we can find some resolution. And then, you know, we started realizing that the resolution wasn't going to be the plan. Tim, when you started off doing comedy and yeah. you were crushing it in New York and you're doing your podcast. Stay in this topic. Yeah. No, Are I you going to stay in this topic yeah, or course. get off the topic? No, I'm right here. Bye. Did you ever think that the word Donbass would be in your vernacular? Well, you know, love, as a comedian, yeah. the Donbass region. I always love the world and I find it mm -hmm. interesting and fascinating and I, that, and I think it's funny. So I think it's very funny. So to me, it's very funny. I live in Beverly Hills. I live in an area where people are monsters and they make valets cry when their cars aren't there and they scream at nannies <laughs> and they terrorize their employees and they're very vicious people. That's how they make all this money. A lot of them, not all of them, you know, but a lot of them are very like, you know, they're tough. Okay. And you wouldn't think of them as humanitarians. That wouldn't be the first word that popped in your head when you think of Beverly Hills, right? These are, you know, big movie producers. These are investors. They're uh, CEOs or whatever. Um, almost overnight, these people, again, who, who, who I've seen throw a fit when their Porsche was not outside of Nobu Malibu in a split second. And, and overnight, they all decided that the one country they really, really felt bad for was the Ukraine. They, they didn't care necessarily about any of the problems in America. They didn't, they rarely ever mentioned, you know, any of these areas like Detroit uh, or, you know, upstate New York or, you know, areas uh, that had been, you know, deindustrialized. People have lost jobs. There's a fentanyl crisis. East Palestine over going on. Well, with yeah, all of that stuff. No one cared about it. But overnight, everyone in Beverly Hills had a Ukrainian flag. And overnight, it was the, the, the accepted position of some of the worst people that I've ever met that, they had decided that the one cause <clears throat> that they were going to invest in in a humanitarian way was Ukraine. And I thought that was very funny. That kind of made me live. It was very interesting. And then this idea that if you had any questions about it, if you had any, if you said, well, wait, what, what, hold on, what did I, uh, you, you, you were branded as like a Putin sympathizer or uh, a Putin apologist. If you ever, if you just wanted to know what was going on, you couldn't ask. So I, I just find all that stuff funny. I find the way that they do that pretty funny and pretty impressive, actually. So we had uh, Eric Prince on a couple days yeah. ago from Blackwater, okay? yeah. who obviously the guy knows a lot about this stuff. This is David Sachs talking about what Eric Prince said. We need to bring that war to a close because all Ukraine is doing right now is destroying itself demographically. They're chewing up the next generation of manpower that they really can't replace right now. They don't have enough manpower. The Western defense base is pathetic, and you're not going to out-conventional war, the Russian bear. An ugly peace is better than whatever their idea of an ideal war is. Freeze the lines. Let them keep Crimea, Donchek, you know, all the other ones. It's not the American taxpayer's obligation to spend another $100 billion in Ukraine when there's been significant corruption, really nothing to show for. Uh, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and by the way, it's not like Zelensky's not. They just found, what, $40 million was gone the other day. Another yeah. guy stole a couple other million. Zelensky's on interviews, geeked out on cocaine, because obviously he's getting the good cocaine now. What? It's like, what do you mean? He, there's a video of him just geeking out. Zelensky's on cocaine now. I, wait, okay. Adam, I know you don't believe anything. No, I'm just I was genuinely I, asking. I but, uh, from the look of it, if you saw it, you'd look like... But you're speculating too, I'm, though. I'm speculating yeah. too. We got that. That was on. But, it was on Vinny.com. But this so the one. Must be true. Yeah. Like, like, like he is. Just, like, look at his mind. He's. Do we have an audio here, Rob, or are we just looking for ammunition. the cocaine? They don't have enough weapons to advance. They can only he defend themselves. In, a nightclub in some cases, <laughs> they're losing territory. But my what my point happens to your country if this American aid. This was arrive. the face of every Bitcoin <laughs> guy in Miami <laughs> when it crashed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So my point, my point being, that it's obviously corrupt. The, the money's getting stolen, but you nailed it too. It's like it's like the BLM thing. If once BLM happened, if you weren't putting a black square, I had people like, "What? Yeah. What the hell is your problem? Mm -hmm. You're not going to support." I'm like, I'm not putting anything, 
anywhere. I'm, I have I'm two like, Instagram yeah. posts on my Instagram right now. It's a black square and a Ukrainian, Ukrainian flag. flag. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we just, That's all uh, I have. I just, uh, you know, it was one of those things that it happened immediately, and everybody was on the same page, and I was confused. I was confused because I remember there were Vice documentaries about Ukraine and how well, it was a white supremacist uh, gangs, these neo-Nazi gangs were in the Ukraine and they were recruiting people in America and it was like a huge issue and there was all this corruption in Ukraine and a, a lot of like neo-Nazi stuff. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's just, that was odd. And then that kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, you know, no, this is the, uh, uh, you know, we're required as Americans to, um, you know, essentially provide military support and, and money for, uh, you know, an, an unknowable amount of time. And I'm personally funding the BLM movement in Ukraine. It's one black guy, yeah. oh, uh, wow. but it's actually a, <laughs> yeah. a Ukrainian guy that uh, identifies as a black guy. So yeah. it's, it's pretty cheap. I just give him one bullet a month. And it is, you know, listen, thing. I, I look at it and I say to myself, I go, uh, you know, it's uh, fun. Uh, it is tragic. Like I thought when this whole thing happened, it was like, just cut a deal. You're from the business world. Make a deal. Make a deal. Just make a deal. Give him Donbass. Give him Lugansk. And give him another thing. Give him a thing he didn't expect. That's fun. You know? In the, Give Putin one <laughs> thing he didn't expect. One little add-on. A, a dead little, puppy, man. You give him a town he didn't. We do, we do this at the closings all the time. We go, and here's two grand that we have this escrow account. We're strategic. We have $2,000. That you 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 overpaid your tax. We'd always do this after we told them we yeah. charging them forty grand. <laughs> you know what I mean? We charge them forty grand to do the loan, and they would look at them and go, "And let me, but let me, let me stop crying. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, because you overpaid your taxes. Here's two thousand dollars you didn't know you had, and then all of a sudden they're wiping the tears away, and they go, "This is kind of what a noble uh, guy this you is kind are, of nice. right? Yeah. And then I say the same thing with Putin. Give him something that he wasn't even expecting. Give him a nice little town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and say, we, we, here are the two things you want, and we're throwing in a bonus for you, and, and end it. Mm -hmm. Sweeten the deal. Sweeten the deal. Well, at, at the end of the day, they eventually have to spend money. Uh, the, yeah. the main question everyone's asking is, if this is going to be like Iraq and we're going to be doing this for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years or not? I mean, obviously, that's one of we the reasons. We can't make any movies about this. No one speaks the language. No one cares. Good point. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything. There's no cultural relevance. You have to think relevance. movie. You have to think. Oh, my God. Yeah. I still got to think that. No. <laughs> not going to happen. not going to work. But yeah. the, the one difference is, and I would pray and hope and being serious, we sent troops into Iraq. We sent troops into Afghanistan. Yeah. We sent troops into Vietnam. We're not doing Vietnam. that. No American boots on the ground. Yet. Hold on, no, okay. is not wait, yet. Covert, wait, covert, you don't know. Yeah. No, I'm saying as a we're policy not, from the well, United yeah, yeah, States, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, that but, is not but, what but we're doing. Let me here. ask you a question. Yeah. Though. So none of this, I'm not, and I'm not being the guy that's, oh, well, it didn't happen on the Trump. It didn't happen on the Trump. I get that. But right. what was the moment where Putin was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm going in? Like what? What, what well, do you think was I, that? I think it was you know when Kamala Harris is is saying things like we want to admit Ukraine into NATO and and this is kind of the established position of the United States government is that um, you know there there's all the the ruling class whatever you want to call them that you know you know people like Ann Applebaum who writes in the Atlantic who says that Russia is a failed state and we need to Westernize Russia I mean you know people read these articles right mm -hmm. the, the people that work at the State Department. Tony Blinken, Victoria Newland, whoever these people are uh, that are around Joe Biden advising him, they read this stuff and they go, Russia is a failed state. We need to go in there and westernize Russia. There is this idea that if we encircle Russia with NATO countries, you know, it becomes an inevitability that Russia eventually. And again, this is something Hillary Clinton has uh, talked about. This is not like a conspiracy theory out of nowhere thing. So whether you agree with Putin or not, his belief is that you're not going to put missiles in the Ukraine. You're not going to put NATO missiles in the Ukraine in the same way that we wouldn't let China put missiles in Mexico. Right. So well, that's been Putin's whole thing is the right. encroachment of NATO. Yeah. And NATO. I assume you saw Tucker's interview with Putin yes. and then the death of um, what's our friend Navalny. Navalny, Alexei yeah. Navalny. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's it's anyone who dies, it's sad. You know what I mean? Um, and I and he died of tuberculosis. Of course. Um, in the Russian prison, which is a huge problem. Tuberculosis <laughs> yeah. in Russia. He stepped on a nail. You know he that. stepped on a nail. This is actually a very yeah. big problem, right? Tuberculosis <laughs> in Russian prisons. And well, I, I, my foundation does a lot of work. To try to <laughs> get rid of it. No, I don't know. Here's the reality. I, I, I will tell you this right now. I don't know. Uh, did the FSB get him? Could, could be. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know why this guy was not he's not a threat to Putin. He's already wasting away in an Arctic jail. He's already in a Siberian jail. He's not going to get out of jail and win an election. This isn't a movie. Yeah. And, you know, everybody in America is like Putin got rid of him because he was a threat. Well, listen, he mm -hmm. was no threat. Zero. And he doesn't have a huge popular support in uh, Russia, by the way. He doesn't. I mean, if you listen to Russian podcast, you know, people that are, it's not like state controlled media. If you actually listen to people, yeah, some people liked him. Some people respected him. You know, uh, Navalny was a, a, a hated, it was a big anti-Jew guy, anti-gay. He came out, he was kind of a ethno, you know, fascist, if you want to call it that. A man of his times. If yeah. You know. And he came out and him and his wife, who's a hero now, she loved him. She, they were all into that. And then he, um, event magically, I don't know, at some point decided those views were not good. <laughs> and he started espousing very Western kind of progressive views. I don't mm, know. Weird. Now, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't know. But one day, this Alexei Navalny, who wrote some very controversial stuff that would not fly in, in today's, you know, um, in today's sensibilities, turned and became a big critic uh, of the Kremlin. And listen, there's a lot to criticize. There's corruption in the Kremlin and there's corruption uh, all over the place. And I'm obviously an American. Rather live here. I like our corruption better. We're better at it. We, we got the best corruption job. in the world. We've got good corruption. Yeah. We're better at it. We know Crony we're capitalism. It. We're a modern society. Uh, we've institutionalized corruption to a degree, whereas Russia is kind of an old world society. Uh, and, they, and they're still mm -hmm. a little rough around the edges, right? That being said, I don't know why Putin goes and kills the guy now when, you know, during the summit, the Munich and, uh, and, Peace and Summit. And maybe he does it to just get people if, talk. I don't You, you do some big weird. interviews, which we'll talk about RFK. I've seen you do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But if you were sent to Russia instead of Tucker Carlson, Tim Dillon had Putin on. Yeah. You wouldn't let him go on on some history lesson. Well, when you, you would ask him tough I, questions. I, what no, did you, what would you do with Putin? I would ask him about the luxury and the mosque and marble and <laughs> hotels and, you Like know, the life. The Moscow Supper Clubs and, you know, really, what is the elite doing and where are they going and <laughs> where, how is Sochi as a second? <laughs> what you actually want to know, though? Yeah. yeah. The, the thing I like about you is, yeah. is your, uh, uh, why, why are you why are you so smart? Why do you know this stuff? Why are you interested I don't think in I'm so stuff? smart. I just, why do you I'm why are you curious into this stuff? I'm curious about it because I grew up and I remember I thought I was right about everything and I thought I was right about the Iraq war. I thought I was right about uh, all these things, right? And I remember being very fervently pro uh, you know going into Iraq and Afghanistan yeah. this guy, guy that believed uh, in 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 that um, uh, idea that we needed to uh, intervene in these countries and uh, change their governments and make them uh, more democratic. This is what I believed. I was 20 years old and on cocaine, but it sounded good. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sounded great. Um, everything sounds good. Everything all sounds the best, good. When every, all the best ideas start with cocaine. Drive yeah. to Vegas. Yeah, everything was good. And then I think it was about being wrong and learning that, you are being sold a version of something, no matter what you are, um, you know, no matter what you are consuming, you're being sold a version of it. And I kind of realized that after the Iraq war and after I'd seen friends of mine go there and volunteer and sign up and some of them, you know, pass away. And, you know, I, I saw the lives of veterans that came back and they weren't getting good health care. They weren't being, adequately taken care of. I saw, you know, I saw parts of America be completely ignored where, you know, 10 counties around DC became the wealthiest in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and to me and a lot of people, it seemed like, you know, we then started becoming appropriately skeptical of all these narratives that the government was telling us that we needed to do. Remember after nine 11, it was essential. It was essential for our security that we needed to do certain things. It's the same argument that's often made. Um, you know, we've been in 25 wars in the past, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, right? How many of them can you name? How many of them were that important to any of us and our way of life? However, we're constantly being told that it's essential that we do these things. So I'm just curious. And I think, uh, I think a lot, and I try to laugh at stuff, so I think a lot of it is funny. I mean, they, they get away with a lot. The people that create these narratives get away with a lot, and I, I just think it's funny the way they do it. I don't have 
a tremendous amount of power to change what's happening. I just think it's funny to notice it and point it out. If I, I think count. humor does. I actually think humor has a lot of Could, power. I, I think yeah. humor makes. Uh, I mean, look the stuff that uh, you know that one joke uh, um, um, uh, Chappelle says when he gets up there and says, "Look, I'm all for this, and you know, women's right to choose and women's rights to get the abortion or not fully, ladies. I'm with you." But yeah. I also want to give men the choice to not have to pay because you chose to keep it, right? right? Yeah. So as right. much as that's humor, that's no, kind of like, true. oh, okay. So I think comedy, So but purely out of my own level of curiosity yeah. with comedians, I love to hear from everybody, yeah. but specifically from you. The, the profile of a comic, there's a comic, it, like you think about an athlete, right? Yeah. There's different kind of athletes. There's those that are fast there's those that have quick twitch, you know, they, they yeah, have yeah. a good first step, but they're slow. But their first step is so quick, their punch right. is slow, punch is fast, but then they don't have a lot of power. You know, they can jump high. They, there's a lot of different ways you yeah. can be an athlete, right? Yeah. For comic, do comics go through a phase of like being like, dude, you know, uh, 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 hey, make me laugh. You know, like you're saying your dad would say, hey, Vinny, why don't yeah. you make us laugh? You're like, yeah. dude, I'm not a clown here. You're not going to say, yeah. just make me laugh. <laughs> do comics go through an uh, 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 evolution of saying, Man, I'm more than just a comedian. I got a brain. I got ideas. I got thoughts. Does that ever does does a comedian ever battle with that or not necessarily? Uh, I don't know. I think that it depends on what medium you're in. Like, right? Like, I have a podcast, so the medium I think requires you to be funny, but also requires you to have thoughts that are interesting and that are engaging. So. I mean, you know, I think it depends on the medium, right? If you're a comedy writer and your job is to just write a bunch of jokes for a show, you you, you might not have that thought. And I, I also never feel like I'm more than a comedian or any any of that. I just feel like I'm interested in things. I talk for two hours a week. You you do as well. You talk for more than me. Um, you you figure out what things interest you, and it inevitably that leads me kind of down the world of like current events or politics or world events or culture. Wealth, people that have had a lot of money forever, it, it makes me laugh. It fascinates me. I, I'm interested in them, and I think they're interesting people. I, I like that they're how cold a lot of them are, and I, I just li I like seeing a rich family in Palm Beach not speaking. <laughs> that makes me happy when I see like four really rich people in a restaurant and no yeah. one's talking on their phones. I like, I like, <laughs> not even on their phones. The mother's just kind of drinking wine, and the father's somewhere else, and the kids are kind of sitting there very stoic. That interests me because I come from a very loud family of screaming, yelling, messy, yeah. middle class people. So people fascinate me. I look at people, I go, they're different than I am. Not on the genetic level, but culturally they're different than I am. It's interesting. And, and they then, have way less money than you. Most uh, yeah, no, I don't think they have way less money. <laughs> but like you look at them and you go, it's interesting. There, There's a cultural difference there. There's something about it. That and that's always fascinated me, and that and that's interests me, and I think that that's mm -hmm. a cool thing. Yeah, Palm Beach is an interesting place. Uh, God, I you love it. Yeah, one time we're uh, uh, we're Best. we're having uh, dinner, Jen and I, at yeah. uh, this place called Meat Market. I'm sure you've been to of it, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you go to this place, and we're having dinner, and I'm looking to my left, and this probably no joke, probably 90 year old lady, okay, and maybe 85, but she's close to 90. Right. You can tell she's very old. She's there. Sitting there with a 35 year old, good looking white guy. Right. And we're like, oh, it's cool. She's with a grandson yeah. and they're just probably mm -hmm. having dinner and that's what's right. going on. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Jen and I are like, babe, but did you, did, did I hear that, babe? She said, babe, I heard that too. I said, babe, that's a little weird, babe. So I kind of, kind of, you know, doing one of these things, trying to see what the hell is going on here. And you're seeing him Tell her, you're a bad girl. <laughs> mm. You're not going to know what I'm going to do to you tonight. No yeah. way. She's like, oh, don't tell oh me. Don't say God. that. There's people yeah. here. I'm like, a 90-year-old lady having a third. Only in Palm Beach Only does that happen, right? It's a fun place, man. I, and I'm it's a an interesting fan of place. Like rich misery. I think it's very funny when people have a yeah. lot of money, but they're still not happy. Yeah. And it's very funny because it just shows that, you know, it really shows that life is not really not about that, but it is very funny. And I was sitting next to a couple, and I'm just watching this couple, and they're not speaking the whole dinner. They're not. I mean, they're saying little things, right? They're just little things about the menu. <laughs> and he's just kind of... And she's just, she's waiting to kind of unload on him. <laughs> and as soon as the waiter leaves, she goes, she goes, you know, the Aspen house is for you. I don't even ski. <laughs> and then he just kind of <laughs> looked to the right. And I just said, these people are loaded. 
They've got everything. <laughs> and they've got everything you could ever want. They got houses in Palm Beach, houses in Aspen, and and she just oh, and they're God. sitting at a table and they're miserable yeah. and they're upset and they're fighting like everybody else does. There's something about that. Joe Rogan told me once he he got back from like I forget what country he was, maybe it was the Philippines or wherever he was, and he was saying you see people there that have no money and they're happy. They're happy. They have not a lot of money. They have very little money. In fact, it's poverty. That but is so true. They're smiling. Yeah. They're happy. They're 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 with their families. They're happy. They're smiling. There's something very very interesting to me always about looking culturally at different things and seeing what what seems to be working, what's not working. I just, my, yeah. This goes back to my my uncle. I've told this story a couple times. My uncle loved watching Kings of Comedy. Yeah. And Bernie Mac was his guy. The best. But my uncle doesn't speak English. <laughs> Interesting. And every Sunday yeah. he would come, he would say, Meti, Meti, Ban, Hanasha Kessen. I want to see the I want to see that man again. And he would laugh for 30 minutes. And my dad said, be very careful reading books because you will never be as happy as this man when right. you start reading books. Right. Because the more you learn, mm -hmm. you lose an element yeah. of that innocence of being the happy simpleton, right? Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. you know, maybe it's better to be the happy simpleton and the guy that's you know, maybe got a house in Austin, maybe in Hollywood yeah. Hills, maybe in, in the state. Certainly, in it's Hampton. better than to be a simple connection to house black. Austin, I'll tell yeah, you much. but the point is, you know, yeah. you, you you battle with that. But I don't know. I will tell you, I've seen people who are poor and miserable, and I've seen people yes. that are poor and happy. I've seen people that are rich and miserable. I've seen people that are rich and happy. If you can figure out a way to be rich and happy, it's the best. Or poor and happy, be in those good. two places. Yeah, that's a good place to be. Yeah, <laughs> ignorance is bliss, is I think what yeah. you're saying. The rich and happy, but is I'm probably saying the best. it in the Assyrian yeah. way. Americans yeah. say it or in a different way. Or very good looking mm -hmm. and dumb. I've always said that. Yeah, yeah, hot yeah. and dumb is the best way to go. Like the surfers in if California. Yes, if you're hot and smart, you yeah. know why people like you, and that'll eat you, uh, eat at you a little bit. You go, they all just like me because I'm hot. Yeah. If you're, uh, you know, not hot and smart, that's a problem. If you're, uh, if it's an issue, if you're uh, uh, really dumb and not hot, then, oh, God, it's really a problem, right? Horrible. But if you are hot and then stupid, you have it all. <laughs> You really do. Yeah. You'll never question why the doors just open for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll never question why people like you. You'll never need to be seen as more. And that, I think that's great too. People in Malibu are very happy. They're very, very happy. Yeah. They go, they wake up, there's an ocean. They go to it. They go in it. They get on a board. They stand up on it. If they catch a few waves, then they come back, they eat a burrito. They have sex with their wife or whatever and they go to bed and it's a very and it's a night you know that's a nice they're not they're not thinking mm. about the ukraine <laughs> no one in malibu is thinking about the ukraine they don't know unless about if the, the girl is from ukraine yeah unless yeah. she's unless ukrainian she, yeah. the, you, you, and then they're thinking about then her. they're really not thinking about that's her. right they're really not <laughs> they're thinking really about not thinking I, I know you're hanging in palm beach and yeah. i'm going to take a stand here um, yeah um i think it's disgusting you these don't like it these 90 year old women with these yeah. hot 30 year old men. This is why I hang out with Miami so yeah. old rich men can hang out with young hot women. Yeah. That's my cup of tea. Well, right I like, there. I like, I like uh, to see people in their 80s, but the tits are still out and the, yeah. you know, the face is done and, you know, they look, they're, they're trying. I like to see women in their 80s try. Yeah. I do. I think there's something really nice about it. It's beautiful in our society. We've created a society where for a few million dollars a year, you can kind of stay. 48 yeah. they look about 48 until you get real close and you go oh my, oh my god, god. <laughs> but they're about 48 until the end you can kind of freeze yourself at 50 with the right amount of uh, disposable income until the end just a couple of million that bucks seems a to be what we've gotten that's interesting yeah so, you freeze it like 60 so yeah. adam you wouldn't be you, you wouldn't be at, at 43 44 years old you wouldn't be with like a 90 year old girl at this restaurant. She has like three months to live, but she's like, I love you, Adam, and everything I have is going to you. I mean, I only have one question. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, how much is she worth and what's her life? 20 expectancy? million. 20 million. Nah, that's not going to do it for me. 20 million. 2 billion. Me and Edith are, oh. are going to get married. Yeah. The Anna Nicole Smith model. It's also a fun place to money. People end up in pools. You know, one of the big Madoff guys ended up in his pool. One of yeah. the Epstein associates ended up in the pool. Oh. It's kind of a shadowy thing that goes on over there. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of power. And then, you know, people end up dead in their pool. A lot of people end up drowning. <laughs> yeah. Is that the way to go? What's, what's the best way to go? If you go, how yeah. would you want to go? 
in a pool in Palm Beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best say, yeah. couple of, couple and, of I like, and I feel like there's got to be a moment where you see them. You know, maybe they're so good you don't see them. Yeah. But there's got to be a moment. I forget which guy ended up in his pool. And, you know, it doesn't even matter. People can look it up. It's May there. our friend drawn. Is, that, is this yeah. the guy? The phil- billionaire philanthropist yes. Jeffrey Power. Right? Hold on. Uh, look, yeah. Accidentally right. drowned in mm. his. It happens a lot I for know. adults. A swimming pool after suffering a heart attack. There's a lot of those happening. Investigating the death of prominent Bernie Madoff investor said on Monday. I mean, it's always that so, accident, random heart attack. It's just fun. It's just interesting. And, you know, <laughs> I feel like he's sitting there by his pool, or maybe he wasn't by his pool, but like he sees them coming. There's a split second, and it's probably a gardener. You know, we've all seen Michael Clayton. <laughs> They're good best at what movie. they do. Oh, yeah. These people do wet yeah. work. They call it, they go and, you know, kill people for a living. It's a living, right? <laughs> It's like I'm not judging. A job's and a job. A gig's not, a gig. And it's probably not great. It's the gig economy. It's not great people either. They're killing, right? Yeah. They're. Pr- it's probably they sleep fine. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> killing Palm Beach investors, you're sleeping fine. It's not. What do you? Can you imagine at the bar? You're like, hey, what do you do for a yeah. living? I specialize in killing people on yeah. Palm Beach. I, you know? I killed the uh, Madoff cool. guy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, good thing. Wet work. So, thanks. For you, buddy. And I always think too, too, like you have to save yeah. your receipts and go like to, to HR. You're like, listen, I got to yeah. get reimbursed. Right. Right. I bought. I bought rope. I took an Uber. <laughs> yeah. You have to do it. But so I, I, I think what's what's fun about that is there, you know, these guys have had this really amazingly charmed life. And then at the very end, it's tough, Epstein, mm. whatever. It happens at the very end. But there's got to be like something in their head that just at the very end, they go, well, you know, this is kind of, mm-hmm. I knew it was kind of going to end like, there's no way you live that type of life and you don't think it kind of has the potential to end exactly how it's going to end. Did you watch the Madoff movie? I think Pacino yes. plays it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There, by the way, I, I didn't even no, know there no, was that. Not Pacino. De Niro Pacino, De Niro, one De Niro, of those two guys, right? De Niro. But did you even know, did they even advertise this movie? I don't remember. I don't think so. I, I accidentally ran into this movie. It was a Netflix movie, right? What, or was it in the theaters? What, HBO movie? There you go. HBO, the Wizard bad, of bad. Lies. Yeah. That's De Niro. That's De Niro. Wow. Yeah. And he plays... Made off. It was good. And how he dies. I thought and it was good. sons were involved yeah. and how they did, they were pissed off at their father. And it was a not a good mm-hmm. guy. Well, PBD, you asked him initially yeah. just to kind of put a ribbon on this. Like being a comedian, how are you so smart? How are you so knowledgeable? And he kind of admitted like I was wrong and I had to learn. And then, yeah. you know, far be it from me, uh, 2005 second runner up of South Florida's funniest comedian over yeah. here. Holy. To, you know, lecture Tim Dillon no. on comedy, the great Tim yeah. Dillon. But I did own a comedy club in Miami. That's where okay. I met our friend Marcelo. And you see what he's yeah. got going on these days. But I will yeah. notice, especially when someone like you sits down with the Theo Vaughn or Brian Callen gets brought in or Vin, whatever. Once comedians start going down that rabbit hole of satire. Yeah. Like when you went down the rabbit hole of satire with Theo Vaughn about the DoorDash guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you know what's going so on. I got to get the DoorDash. So fun. But once you start going over that rabbit hole. Yeah. And you're just one-upping each other on complete sarcasm. Yes. Eventually, you're going to get to a nugget that's actually true. Yeah. And you're like, oh, like the DoorDash thing. is. Yeah. I'm sure there's a million examples, but sure. you know what I'm saying? Like you just go sarcasm, joke, joke, joke. You go down this rabbit hole <clears throat> and all of a sudden a nugget of truth pops up yeah. and you go, okay, that's what probably yeah. happens with you, no? Well, I think what happens is if you talk without constraints, mm-hmm. uh, you will eventually end up somewhere interesting. Now, and, and, and a lot of times interesting things happen to be true. But if you're talking without constraints with somebody, uh, you, you end up figuring out uh, something because you don't, you're not worried about, uh, you know, maybe things that other people would worry about because mm-hmm. you're just trying to be funny. So in the, you know, you're just trying to be funny and then you're saying, well, what about this? What about that? Yeah. What about these premises? It's all like figuring out like, what about this? What about that? What if they, what if they're doing it for this reason? What if they're doing it for that reason? And then eventually you get to it and you go, Oh, that actually sounds really plausible. Right. Yeah. Like Vinny, you and, and it may you, not be, but it's you know, you that's how you get there. You you talk about when you did uh improv, not saying because obviously you yeah. do stand up when you do improv, there was like a, a technique. Yes and yes you and never, you what never is that? Yeah. Deny, you never deny in the scene because I was doing the groundlings when I first got to LA out of the military and it was people were like, and I'm an elephant now. And somebody's like in the scene, like, no, you can't be. And the teacher would stop the whole class and be like, rule number one, never ever shut off somebody's idea. Just add on top of it, like you said, Tim, yeah. the, the what if. And what if this happens? And then you go down that route. It's and how we create terrorist groups in the Middle East. <laughs> yeah. We just say, we go, it's Al-Shabaab. And then they go, no, it can't be. And we go, no, it is. <laughs> how dare you? You know, when they're uh, sitting, in Langley, yes. they're uh, sitting in Langley, Virginia, the CIA, that's what it is. It's riffing. riffing. It's ISIS. It's ISIL. It's just riffing. Yeah. And you just dump a few weapons to a couple of guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> who are kind of nuts anyway and see what they do. And and that's what it is. No one at Langley can say it can't be. It can't yes, happen. No. There's yes, no, it can't yes, happen. And. It's ISIS and no, it's ISIS. So it can a, be both, A comedian to be the president of the Ukraine. They go, absolutely. And yep. somebody in the room goes, I don't know about that. You know, they stop. Exhibit A. Yeah. Let, let, so let, why don't we go into some of these stories that we can riff in. Sure. Let's see how we can riff. Rob, can you pull up? Uh, uh, this is breaking news, by the way. I'm sure you didn't know this, but it's massive news, uh -oh. life-changing type of news. Uh -oh. Wall Street Journal, Rob, that CDC just gave us the report that we all need to start to adjust oh. the way we're living. Oh, no. It's official. Keyword, official. We can pretty much treat COVID <laughs> like the flu now. What? And it gives you the guide. So no longer... CDC actually yeah. came out and told us it's no longer the COVID. Mm -hmm. It's now just the flu. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, it's always been the flu? Do you think it's always been, but it took CDC four years to figure it out? Do you think there was some craziness going on? What do you, what do you think is going on here with, with COVID, CDC not telling us it's the flu? You know, you got to realize when COVID first happened, people got very excited. And I'll tell you why, because they had talked about it for a long time. You know, like Bill Gates had run all these like, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, simulations, <laughs> simulated events like they get really excited. Yeah. About it. Simulation. You know, they, yeah. Yeah. They go, they go, what, what, maybe, you know, what if we had a, what if we had a, I'm a little sickness, you know, what if we, what if we had a little shutdown? What if we had a pandemic? They thought about it and they, they considered all the things that they would do if there was a pandemic. This is something that they had prepared for. They, they were really into this, right? This is something they would do. They would have these uh, drills and program and all this stuff. They go, how would we respond to a pandemic? So I think what happened when COVID happened was, you know, basically they were like, let's try out all the stuff we thought we would try out. Let's lock everyone down. Let's transfer all this money to people that are rich already. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they do. Let's see what people will tolerate. Let's, you know, because I think that they were like, if not now, when? This is the epitome of the if yes not and. now, when? Yes yeah. and. Let's if not keep going. Now, if you have prepared for this day and you've run all these simulations and you've discussed what you were going to do and it happens, you do it. Yep. You know, Rahm Emanuel, who was Obama's chief of staff, said never let a good crisis go to waste. I mean, I'm sure we've all heard this and repeated it ad nauseum, but that's the way I think they looked at COVID. They were like, let's see what we can do here. Yep. You know? And, and, and Tim, do you think, because, by, by, mind you, you know this, the timing couldn't have been perfect to, you know, last year presidency, this thing comes out of Wuhan lab, yeah. we own it, Fauci. Do you think, even though now, I mean, obvi it's obvious, we knew as yeah. it was happening, Tim, but now, because of the, the, the news cycle is so fast, now, what, a couple years later, now you're like, okay, it was the flu. Yeah. Mass didn't work. Fauci lied. The science was off. Now Americans are just like, dude, we're on to the net. We have to worry yeah. about Ukraine. Nobody gives a shit, even though now we know for a fact they lied the entire time. Meanwhile, Fauci, who was a mouthpiece, is protected by the Secret Service full time, our tax dollars. He's mm -hmm. retired and he's protected forever. It will never be held What I enjoy about COVID is that, of course, China's been held accountable for everything they've done. Everything that happened in the virology department of the Wuhan lab, it's all been rectified. They've, they've, they've given their conclusion. No. Apologized. China, no, China they, no, they, they haven't. No. I think, I think what? I was trying to be a comedian again. Is it yes. being facetious? Is that, okay. is that the word? Is that the word? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yes, and. stimulate yeah. Yeah. is the yeah. stimulation. Well, I, no, but, but I, yeah. I agree with what you're saying with the fact that nothing's happened there yet. The, question, the question I'm asking is the following. Here's the question I'm asking. I, the jokes, let's have fun with that. But I'm asking a real question in this part. Do you think it's always been the same? Or do you think it's no longer the same because our bodies are immune to it, so it can no longer fight us the way it did? Like, what do you think actually? So, I mean, I'm not, you know what I'm asking, I'm not a right? doctor. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that the, the original COVID variant was worse, right? Mm -hmm. It weakens over time. How much worse? I don't know. I think that really all depends on, like, what were the numbers of COVID deaths that were purely from COVID? What were the numbers that were from another maybe disease, fatal disease plus COVID? I don't know. I've heard lots of different people offer testimony. People I respect that go, no, it was much more serious early on. And it probably, I, I imagine it was. How serious was it? was the right way to go about it to shut everything down and have these rolling shutdowns for two years and, uh, you know, make people overall pro probably less healthy and shut down national parks and shut down 
um, you know, gyms and shut, you know, but leave liquor stores open, like right. The famous thing, you shut down churches, but you can go out and get drunk. Priorities. We got to keep our priorities. <laughs> right. straight, yeah. Yeah. That in hindsight seems silly yeah. and not the way to have handled it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you whether it was more serious or not, but the response to it now in hindsight seems absurd. Mm. From a federal uh, response. Uh, yeah, because if you look absurd. at it from a federal response, obviously Trump started with the Operation Warp Speed and then Biden carried it on in his legacy. But, you know, some some heroes were formed during yeah. COVID. And that's right. the beauty of what's going on in America is you have 50 states to choose from. So, you know, I was in Florida or Texas during COVID and you would sort of not even notice it was that big right. of a deal. Well, it depends where you were. Exactly. Right? But if you're in California yeah. or if you're in New York, well, God forbid you're, you're one of those not, nursing not homes really with Cuomo. Yeah, so in Beverly oh. Hills, we had no vax mandate. We had no mask mandate. And, you know, we didn't because it's a lot of uh, the rich get richer. Well, it's a lot of Iranians, people like that. They, they don't they're not they don't fall for like bullshit mm -hmm. as easily. So it was a lot of like, uh, you know, Persian people and stuff like that. Beverly Hills kind of does mm -hmm. its own thing. I wasn't aware of how draconian a lot of the measures were. You know, I had friends calling me going, I can't get in. They're doing temperature checks and this and that. Like, it's weird. Like, I, I have to have a vax card. I have to have my thing on my phone. For us, it was not. It was very kind of localized. Like, Beverly mm -hmm. Hills didn't have a lot of the. It was just everywhere else in California. A lot of except other for French Laundry, that a one lot restaurant. of other places. Except, yeah, I mean, listen, it, it, it certainly was. There were things in Beverly Hills were annoying too, but like it was less annoying than mm -hmm. the city of L.A., for example. Just like uh, California's passed a mansion tax where you have to give five percent or four percent of your house if it sells for over five million dollars, or five percent if it sells for over ten million, and this has to go right to the government so that they can fight homelessness with this okay. money. That doesn't how sound like redistribution do of wealth it's never at all. Been, it's never been defined how they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But you know who's exempt from it? You're going to laugh. Malibu, mm. Beverly Hills, okay, um, Manhattan Beach, like any incorporated city that is – so city of L.A., city of Los Angeles, they – ULA is, is – you have to pay if you sell your home. Other places like Beverly Hills or Malibu, you don't. So it is weirdly localized. But overall, you know, California and New York had bad leadership, I think, during COVID. They had bad leadership during riots. They had bad leadership. And a lot of people fled those states and, you know, they're relocated. I think Are you PPD, planning on staying? I move around so much as a comedian that I'm not, you know, ever quite, you know, I go with my accountant at the end of the year and basically figure out where I've been. He goes, we've well, been here. You've been there. Um, I have friends and family in New York, so I'll never be able to, I'm not going to abandon New York. I'll spend time there. And, and I, you know, I'm in the business of comedy. So I like LA. I have great friends in Austin. I, I, I go there a lot too. So I don't know. Long term, I'll probably end up in Florida mm -hmm. long term. Cause I love Florida. Well, you're welcome here anytime. Palm yeah. Beach is accepting applications. Can yeah. I get your opinion on the COVID thing? Cause uh, you've been very outspoken about this. I think one of the things, cause you said when you were in the army, you were getting jabs, boom, 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 mandates. That's one of the biggest things, you know, you've said openly on the podcast, your father got the vax and so did Melva, I believe, but mm -hmm. that's not something that you stood for. I think it was the mandates and the painting with broad strokes where if you're old and you're unhealthy and you have comorbidities, yeah. Go get and get the get the jab, but then you see the slippery slope of like now we need elementary school kids getting the jab. It's like now you need to go get your twelfth booster. Thanks, yeah. guy. So where do you draw the line on this? What's your take on this whole? Because I remember when yeah. our, our other friend over here got very sick because of COVID. Um, you, I mean, I saw you lost twenty pounds from it because it, it wasn't the flu, but right. the mandates. Uh, I mean, I still can't smell. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. But how, where do you stand on this? No, I listen. My question is, I'm coming from a place of curiosity. I know you're like RFK. Yeah. We've had RFK on multiple yeah. times. We talk about a lot of different things. He is more paranoid on the way vaccines were used yeah. during COVID. And a lot of parents are concerned about that. I'll tell you a couple of things on what I think happened with this, because go to the next one, right? I mean, mm. if if Bill Gates really wanted to sell people on his, let's just say he's got a depopulation or there's people that yeah. believe that he Which does. Which he let's says, just, openly says. Yeah, a lot of people, people say the concern is there's too many people. And by the way, other people we've had on the podcast have said this, yeah. right, yeah. openly that they think there's too many people. If that's the case, I mean, you can go use scripture and say the Bible says a third of, you know, people will 
die. And there's going to be such a famine that's going to show up that a third of people could die. So Bill Gates could be a preacher and try to spin that and get people to start kind of thinking about that. But for me, I think a lot was revealed. They tried to accelerate the process of control very quickly. The last four years, you saw that with what uh, some of the things World Economic Forum was doing. And I'm convinced the right people are not going to let that happen. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to do it as much as possible. The only thing that we have to be careful with is the following, is this, this thing goes away. People are no longer that curious to know if China was behind COVID. Why? Because it's yesterday's headache. Yep. And we've moved on, right? So it's kind of like, like you know, the line that Hillary Clinton uses? Like when I talked to Anthony Weiner, what, what does she say? What's the big deal? What, what's the? Have you ever seen when she said that? The when past she, is in the past. The past is in the past. And she's like, what difference, what does, difference it does it make? Yeah. Right? What difference does it make now? But they are banking on majority of the people saying, what difference does it make? And I don't think that's the right thing. By the way, if Trump does get elected and none of those findings come out, then guess what? And you didn't fulfill your campaign commitments. 100%. If you're going to go out there and saying these people are going to be held accountable, mm -hmm. well, you better pull it off because that's a lot of what America wants to know. Because if it doesn't happen, next time around, COVID comes around. If we make the same mistakes again, it's people's fault. It's the leader's fault. Are they still selling the boosters and stuff? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, but are that, they? that I like. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> As just somebody as a Business. fan of Mark, let, let's be honest, as a fan of Mark, now this thing hasn't really worked in the way that anyone thought <laughs> yeah. it was going to work. And they're still out there and they go, we've got a new one. And I love, and by the way, no one, the terms and the COVID and the, the things they call COVID are confusing. And the new strains are all the time popping up. Are you up to date with all the boosters? Have, are you on the seventh no, one or the no, eighth I got, one? I got the, the first two shots because I had to. I would. I was touring as a comedian. Like you can't do it if mandates. Got to get into the UK. Is that like, the whole space? You couldn't do it if you weren't. Uh, couldn't do it. Couldn't go to couldn't, Canada. You anything. couldn't go to Canada. You couldn't go to UK. You couldn't do New York City. How about in the states? The, the New big York places. You couldn't do it. L A. L A. L A. L A. People, comedians, well known that we both know. We're like Vinny. Well, Do you have of, a fake card, a vaccine card even, that I could get? Even I got venues a in right, you know, red states, even venues in red states, if they were, you know, a lot of them would still require you to have the thing. So I got the first two, but I never got any boosters. But I know people with the boosters and the boosters. To me, it's it's an, the ultimate comedy is that, like, you know, it didn't really work and it didn't, you know, do the thing that they said it was going to do. Um the only thing now they go, well, you would have been dead. That's like the last thing that, you know, in the beginning, they're like, you won't get it. Then they're like, well, you will get it. You won't get sick. Then they go, no, you'll get it and get sick, but you won't get that sick. And then they go, no, 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 you'll get it. You'll get sick. And it'll probably be really bad, but you won't die. That was the last, the last yeah. thing they had left. So the fact that they're still selling it three years later, that Pfizer is still going, let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. bring it to market. To me, I think that's how they're, and, and can you imagine like people walking in and want and still wanting this, going in and going, can I get a booster? And the people at Wall, you know, like Walmart or wherever the hell, mm -hmm. they're getting these things. The pharmacy at CVS are like going, what? And they go, no, no, I want a COVID booster <laughs> in 2024. Well, it's yeah, the hot 90 year olds in Palm Beach. They no, got to yeah. stay well, fit. They well, got to well, stay well, firm. They got to well, stay friendly. Well, if you guys think about it, though, I mean, when you have Travis Kelsey, who's dating one of the most popular non singing females on the planet, doing commercials going, hey, Jab yourself. That's, yeah. That keeps that, that wheel going. But going back to the overpopulation thing where it's not, it's not like they're hiding it. When Bill Gates goes, yeah, you know, we're, you know, there's too many of us. Do you guys remember Prince Philip, that really attractive looking guy? Rob, I sent you the photo of him. Fr Prince Philip, who died uh, at 99 years old. In 2009, he said this about when he dies. He goes, in the event that I am, he dies oh. and I'm reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. Well, I think he died as a deadly virus. Take a look at the photo <laughs> right there. Go to the photo there. of him, go go look at I mean, he did wow. it. You, These are the people. Well, the that's Philip. You've done it. Well, that's way, what they did in uh, Indiana that Jones said, in the last that That's an absolute, Bob, go, it, it's a quote. Verify the quote. Like, Verify the quote yeah. that he said that. And it's a quote what from a him, Business quote. Insider. He, I like when it's like Illuminati gloves off. You know what I mean? When, <laughs> at least they're not hiding it. When they're at the end. They got integrity. Yeah, they're like, let me just come out and say He's on his deathbed. Exactly. These are his last words. He's not he's, holding any punches back. This is what he believes. He's 99. And I've said this before, Tim. And I want to know what your yeah. take is. Like, if you think about Can it. Can you find a they, quote, Rob? Yeah, they did, Rob, it's in there. Rob, uh, well, 
Yeah, yeah let's fast check. Reliable, but usually Snopes uh, is against this. It says Thank it's you. true. Oh, shit. For, for that mm. guy, of that Great guy, work, Rob. Oh, shit. For him to say, in the event that I come back, I want to f kill as many of you effers as possible. So, by the way, this is the elite oh mindset. God. And going back to, to so Tim, if COVID, because like you nailed it, bro. They, wow. they warned us. Yeah. They had all these, they had exercises. I don't know if it was the year. It was like pandemic something readiness preparation. and a half, they're, they're, It's in your face. It's projective program. They show you what they're going to do. They had if, some like JV things. The swine flu. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. the monkey pox. No, they had yeah. other things going they on. They had an exercise. But if you think, if this was a movie, if this was a movie, think about what they got away with and everything, like all the mainstream media, it was so plan cnn had a death track ticker like every day it was like the the debt thing so if you think about yeah. look at what we th what they got from it okay the who 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 and cdc they have all this power now they can do whatever the hell they want right it helped with the voting mail-in voting rampant around the country okay they destroyed small businesses and you nailed it those deaths i know a guy that worked that's one of those administrators at a hospital he goes Vinny, this is early on tim he goes if somebody came in with the more, they died from a motorcycle accident, and they tested positive for COVID. We would tell the family, "Hey, just just here's some cash. We'll put that he died of COVID, not that." that Were they doing that, man? I would have done that. Hundred no percent for cash. I we gotta get those numbers up. I would have showed up and said. <laughs> My mother died of COVID in 10 <laughs> seconds. I would have said it. I had no idea they were offering envelopes of money. They were giving cash. I'll do giving that tomorrow. Cash. I'll do it now. Can we but, do it? Can I retroactively yeah. do it? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but not, yeah. but if it was a movie. Can we retroactively <laughs> do it? I'd like to go I'll on the tell record. You my whole family died yeah. of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Give me anything. I just shot, Cut me yeah. a check. I just yeah. shot a guy. He Why was, not? Yeah, well, that's bullet. a form of reparations, though. It's, yeah. well, we should be able to do that. I mean, right? yeah. I mean think about it. Like, what is it hurting you if on the death certificate it just says, COVID instead of motorcycle. Who gives a shit? Because they wanted to inflate the numbers, but the accountability to yeah. this day to mm -hmm. China should scare the shit out of everybody because guess what? They're already saying pandemic number two. How many more warnings do you have to get to say no? Well, no, no. I remember I was in a this 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 little chat app called Clubhouse. It was really I remember hot that. during the pandemic. It was hot for about six months. And yeah, it was it fizzled. Yeah. It fizzled. Yeah. Yeah. But you'd go into these rooms, and it was an audio app where people would talk to each other during the pandemic, very isolated. Everyone was, like, hanging out on this app. And there were people saying, we're going to have a pandemic every five years. They were peeing. They were giddy. Sure. Truly. Jesus. They were giddy about it. They were saying... There was a woman on one of these things. She's like, listen, she goes, we're going to have this every five years. This is just the way of life now. This but, is what it is. And I think a lot of people got very excited, especially people in the tech industry that are like, yeah, stay in your home. That's right. Use our product. Yeah. Use oh. our services. Yep. And, and I, I think they got really excited. And maybe the people from Zoom had something to the uh, evolution uh, gain from this. Maybe, I know, you, you know, you're, you're more, certainly more of a business mind than I am. But like what how many years do you think? We accelerated during COVID. For example, now remote work is huge. All these things are huge. You know, probably at least five, maybe. I mean, the, 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 the big thing would be 10. But, like, this idea of, like, how much did it speed up our, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, delivery uh, into this uh, digital landscape? Was it, do you think that we would have gotten there and, Five years? Do you think we would have gotten there in two years? It's not, it's not even going there. America's the only country in the world that believed it, that right. went back to it. Meaning, like, right. for example, I'll give you crazy stats, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, do you know what country in the world is the worst country that have kids being born to a single mother? Don't what? know. U.S. Yeah. 40%. Makes sense. 40% of the kids are born to a single mother, fatherless home. Jeez. 40%, Right. Do you know what that number is in India and China? No. Let me just give you the world. The world average is 7%. Okay. India and China are 4 and 3%. Right. Only in America will we get to 40%. Right. And we don't sit there comparing the stats. We're like, okay, that's just the way it is. I bet everywhere else is like this, right? Right. Mm. So there's a guy, there was an event being done here in, in southern uh, uh, South Florida by Ron Biscardi that I sent Tom and, uh, and Eric to. Rob, you played this clip. I texted it to you a couple weeks ago. We play this on a podcast this billionaire says this whole concept of working from home and she's trying to correct him right you won't find it like this just look for a text that i sent you rob and find it through the text i've sent you and you'll see there so he says um yeah you know uh, u.s is the only place that people still are not coming back uh, to offices right everywhere else everybody's back at offices 
except in America. Interesting. So why is that? What are we doing? Right. Maybe it's our policies. Maybe companies are accepting it. Yeah. Maybe companies are afraid. More and more companies today are flat out saying you're either at the office or you're not. You're just going to get fired. Right. I'm totally fine. So Musk brought that b- back up first. Some other other guys are bringing it up as well. To me, here's kind of what I want to ask with this. Okay. All right. So we went through a pandemic. No problem. Fair to say America wasn't ready for it. Okay. Yeah. On how to react to it. Literally. That's very fair Every to day say. they're like, uh, y- you want to say something? Yeah, I'll say something. So here's what's going on. Okay, do you have anything? Okay, we'll give you another update tomorrow. Okay, okay, all right. So, hey, do you want to... Did you flatten remember? the curve. Flat, we're going to flatten Everybody the curve. Everybody was so nervous. Yeah. So here's a question. How much do you think from 2020, say February, yeah. till today, how much do you think we've actually invested time, money, resources in being prepared for the next one. Nothing. That's the point. Zero. Zero. So we just went through it. How much smarter did we get? Well, I think it's no fun to avoid the pandemic. Nobody wants that. None of these simulations that Gates or any of these guys ran involved being over the pandemic in 48 hours, <laughs> yeah. by the way. None yeah. of them were like, here's how we nip this in the bud and move on. Mm-hmm. They were like, here's how we deal with this incredibly devastating thing. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't seem like – and I think they say we get uh, one every 100 years or so, or, you know, the last one was Spanish flu in yeah. 1918. So I The think, good old days. You know, I think, I think you know, we're, we're, we're famous as a country for moving forward. Well, what's great is, you know, the big pharma companies, the Pfizer's, the Moderna's, you know, as nonprofit companies, as 501c3s, this this was what they just, they wanted to help us all out. They didn't make any money from all this. I think They didn't generate tens of billions and hundreds of billions of dollars. The legacy of this is that no one, unfortunately, there has been a seed of distrust sown uh, into the population when it comes to the government and to big corporations and these narratives that I think can't be undone and it will take a long time. It'll take generations of people to ever, if they ever fully get that trust back, Mm -hmm. it'll take a long time because I don't think um, people are ready now to trust them again on a a wide range of issues, but certainly not on public health. Oh, it's, it's at the, I think the trust in the government mm-hmm. and the media right now is at an all-time high, feels, isn't it? Well, I, all, all-time low. All-time yeah, yeah, yeah. low. Meaning, yeah. Meaning, yeah, a, They're they, crushing it. They are. Which is know. sad because you need it. If you're going to have a functioning government, you're going to have a functioning media. You need people to trust these institutions. But when they let you down over and over again, there's just, you know, what are you going to do? Well, I, I, I will say this. Um, I think COVID was one of the best things that ever happened to us in America. Now you're going to think like, what the hell are you talking about right there? Because the, the reason I liked it is because now everybody has to reveal their hand. Yeah. Big pharma, we understand what they, what they stand for. Big tech, we understand what they go for. Big government, we understand where they're at. Everyone had to put their hand on and say, this is, what our, this is where I'm at. We saw the big tech overlords and the virtual governments expose how they basically vote. Yeah. We understand what big pharma is. Uh, everyone had to get revealed. Now, Kind of like what you said when you were 20, you thought you knew everything. Yeah. You know, I, unfortunately, that took me until about age 40. Yeah. And, uh, That's you know, the one. That's the, the one, Rob. The, oh, with Barry Stern. Like, the, the thing is this, though. Fool me once, right? Shame right. on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. If it happens again, I think it woke up. You said how the right people are always finding each other. Here's now. the problem, though. I, but people problem. have been woken up. I, Here's the problem. Yeah. Let me just tell you what the problem is. This is why we're having a hard time making progress. Rob, can you pull up the video I just sent you? Uh, earlier, Chuck Schumer. Okay, so this is Chuck Schumer. This is, Chuck. this is why it's going to be very hard to make progress. If you go to, to uh, um, uh, you'll, you'll see I text it to you, Rob. You should have it in your text. If you look at it, it's a clip of Chuck Schumer talking to Biden on a hot mic, and you should see what he says to him. Oh, really? I know. No, no joke. I mean, you have to see what he says to him. Okay. When, how, how long ago was this? this is, uh, just, just play this clip. Okay. And wh- whether this is... Went to three days ago. Go ahead and play this clip. Watch this. Zoom in a little bit so we can see the words. Did you hear what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've done it for six years now. I can keep doing it. That freaking snake. He's a snake. Joe Biden has no idea who he's talking to, by the way. Okay, you can pause.
Rob's the right here, Rob. The point is, Curl to the top, yeah. Rob. The point is, if if you continuously have this, we're yeah. we're not we're not going to make progress on no. how to be prepared for the next one. No. Go ahead. No, yeah, and I mean, this is this is how they talk. This is the thing. This is how this is how they talk, right? I mean, I think that like. People, do you believe this? Do you believe that's exactly like this kind of stuff happens? This is exactly how they talk all the time behind closed doors and in front of you. This is how they talk. They actually have contempt for people. It seems like because they they look at it like um, you know basically this is you know people have said you know it's like a quote that people have used all the time. But they're like Washington is Hollywood for ugly people or whatever. Right. Yeah. But that's, this is the way that they, they, it's what can be sold to you. And they're basically like, we can blame these people. We can lie. All we care about is our donors. All we care about is the money. All we care about is protecting the people <laughs> that put us there, that give us money. Chuck Schumer is the Senator from wall street, by the way, yep. New York Senator. He has a constituency. They don't, they don't care. They don't care. This is how they talk. They, they are behind Closed doors, they could be playing golf in Greenwich, Connecticut, or Palm Beach, or wherever they are. Maybe they're drinking wine in Napa Valley uh, with Gavin Newsom. At the yeah, French laundry. winery. Yeah. Wherever it is, they are not talking about the fentanyl crisis. They're not talking about people that don't have jobs. They're not talking about immigration. Other than to say, donors are upset. They're getting uh, pushback. How do we handle these very wealthy people that pay us money? That's really what... This is what they do. Now, yeah. now the internet's ruined this whole thing now. For them. <laughs> is, you know what I mean? Imagine doing this for hundreds of years, and then all of a sudden, they don't know what a hot... Mo- they go, ruined their good shtick. Luck explaining to Joe Biden well, what this even is. Yeah. You know? The most like, important and, thing to me in this entire thing is when he says, I'm a pro. Because if you go down the rabbit hole of I'm a pro, what does that mean? And he's a pro. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, he's not is lying. that I am the he's, establishment. Yeah. Oh, I've been doing this for decades. How long has he been the Senate majority or minority leader? Yeah. Two decades, probably. Oh. And it's uh, what I will say is it's as establishment as it gets, but it works on both sides of the aisle. Because yeah. for every Chuck Schumer, of course. there's our good friend Mitch Mitch McConnell McConnell. and like those are the neocons essentially that are going back and forth on this yeah and they're just playing the game of politics and there's dead people to show for it and and there's two things number one zero zero accountability zero they get away with all of them well because people keep voting for them in no no but but, people voted for a corpse named Mitch McConnell again in 2020 come back to the people in Kentucky should be held accountable people in New York should be held accountable when I I hear people like this when I see this and God knows what they're saying behind the closed doors I, I wouldn't put it past them to be in cahoots with a different country to be like, oh, you know that disease that you know they'll call a flu in a couple of years. Release that shit, and we'll never yeah, hold any accountability. You, you don't. You don't really know. You, you never know. know. You don't know. Let it leak. Let it leak. We want to get the president out. Look, let it I leak. Mean, for me, allegedly, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Let it, that's, I'm coming from a place of, if like, uh, uh, who's I talking to? I was talking. Oh, I was talking to uh, Prince. I said, okay. Typically, when you have two people get into a fight. Yeah. You could be your kids, okay? It could right. be your friends. It could yeah. be your cousins, your right. parents. Right. You know, whoever it is, employees. First thing you do, you bring them together, and hey, your position, your position, totally get it. What do you guys agree on? You try to find a point of, you right. know, where middle at least ground. there's some, right. not, not, not necessarily middle ground. What do you actually agree on, okay? That's a, right. Right? You, and, and I asked Eric, I said, so imagine we're in a room. Okay. Yeah. I'm the mediator. You're the mediator. Anybody is the mediator. You have Schumer. Yeah. You have Pelosi. Right. You have, you know, AOCs, the Obamas, whoever it is. Right. right? And then on the other side, you got whoever, pick them. McConnell, Matt, whatever. The big, well, McConnell yeah. establ- establishment. Matt, so like, like Matt Gates, Donald Trump. Let's just Trump. say Matt Gates. Let's just yeah. say Trump. Let's Jim just Jordan. Say, let's just say Jim Jordan. Let's just say Trey Gowdy. Let's just say some of these guys, okay. right? And you ask, Lindsey Graham, all these- what do you guys agree on? <laughs> like, do you do they both believe America is great, the greatest country in the world? They would all say yes. Here's the thing. But what does it mean? None of right? them are telling the truth. Your thing only works if people are being honest. It, it, they're not ever being honest. They're always lying. And they're lying because— do you remember that one time— They be- all agree on self-preservation. Exactly. They just want to— continue to rule no term are you convinced are you convinced the 56 guys that started this country were the same way um no because it was a it was a different time um but i i think that like 
uh, you know, for example, I think there was a lot more risk than there was now, right? So when those 56 guys were starting the country, lose, uh, there's a lot less to lose now. Like, or, or then. Well, then you could get killed for taking a stand and starting a country. You could, England could, you could lose a war. You could, you know what I mean? Like, I guess what, what I'm saying is a lot less to lose. You had a lot less money to lose. You have a yes. lot more money to lose. You have a lot more control to lose. Back then, you're like, dude, I ain't got nothing. Like, the yeah. only thing I got is freedom. You're going to kill me? Or, or what yeah. else do I have? I'm either going to be a slave to, you know, Britain, or I'm going to yeah. be a, you know, a, a free person. So yeah. the only thing is, historically, you can typically find something they have in common. Okay, yeah. Phil is going to say, Kobe, you hate Shaq, Shaq, you hate Kobe? Yeah. Do you want to win another chip? Do you want to be better than Kareem? Do you want to yeah. go into history books as the most dominant center of all time? Kobe, do you want to pass up MJ? I do. Can we make this work? The problem <clears throat> with a lot of high up establishment people on both sides of the aisle is if you said, what are the things we agree on? It would be like enslaving the population and love <laughs> of Satan. <laughs> It's sad, but it's un so like, undeniable. <laughs> it's like, so that's unfortunately. And then they go, okay, let's work from there. Let's build. Let's now build. we can build. Yeah. Okay, so if that's so, the case, yeah. if that's the case, <laughs> I want you to be the strategist that you are politically. Yeah. Because a lot of people that uh, follow your content sure. or they follow us or they follow a lot of these yeah, other yeah, yeah. cons, and they're common sense people that would like to be free, have fun, yeah. enjoy their time with their family, yes. you know, go out there and do their thing. What do you think is the solution to Dis disconnect? Keep disconnect. You think that's the solution? Well, I don't mean disconnect in the sense of like, uh, you know, become like a hermit and, you know, go underground or whatever. I mean, don't believe things that don't make sense to you. This is, I think, very important. If something does not make sense to you, don't believe it. Don't make these logical, crazy leaps in your mind. Now people are asking you to believe things that are, are they're, that, you know, if somebody says a, a man can get pregnant, we know that's not the case. I'm what? Careful. Sorry, be very no careful. longer on YouTube. Tim, yeah. stop. I apologize. Tim, stop now, Tim. But so that's not the case, right? It, it, so if, if, if somebody has to explain something yeah. to you in a three-hour lecture, yeah. okay, uh, in, a, in a field of study that has only existed for 20 or 30 years, um, you know, you know, you have to be, I think, appropriately skeptical of all that stuff, right? You have to look at it and go, that doesn't make any sense to me. If people, if overnight you were told that you owe the Ukraine a percentage of your tax dollars forever, that doesn't make sense to you. You're right. You're correct. You know, if overnight people are saying we're rewriting every biology book in America to say that biological sex and gender have nothing to do with each other. And you go, that seems extreme. It doesn't make any sense. You're right. If people say, like, we're not going to have a border and we're going to let people come in no matter who they are. Don't fight it. Just agree with from. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like you have to trust your own intuition. That doesn't mean you know everything. That doesn't mean you're a doctor. It doesn't mean you're a lawyer. It doesn't mean you're a scientist. What it does mean is that you have common sense. And if people are asking you to completely throw away all of your common sense, something's wrong. I'm asking a different question. Okay. I'm asking a different question. The question yeah. I'm asking is, sincere, would you like America to stay as the greatest country in the world? Would sure. you? You would sure. like that? Yeah. Okay. So how many of yous are out there that are influential in different space, business, politics, comedy, Hollywood? Yeah. How many of you, your level of influence yeah. are out there? What I number do you no think idea. it is? I have no idea. What do you think it is? I actually think, let's okay. put a number to it. What do you think that number is? Give me a number. How many total followers you got? 10 million, 15 million, 20 million? I, 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 we have a lot. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, we've, we've got a million a week on the podcast. It's close to a million on Instagram. We've got close to a million on Twitter. And I have people that come buy tickets. And we've I think you're 5 million plus. Uh, yeah, sure. Cons okay. So how many people do you think that are like you, that love America, that want to be left alone, yeah. that have 5 million or more, that are willing to do something about it, that if we were to hold a meeting and they're all willing to attend, how many think would be there in that room? Uh, what do you think that number is? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I, and I, I don't know. I, 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 would, I don't know. Can we guesstimate and say... A thousand. Okay. That's that's a fair number. Is that a fair number? That's yeah. a fair number. Okay. Let's say it's a thousand. So let's just say we actually do this. I would love And we it. come together and we have this meeting of these thousand people that yeah. say, okay, what can we do to unite and kind of figure something out? What do you think would be, you know, an approach to take 
to prevent these guys from ruining the greatest nation in the world? Um, well, people would have to get involved in the in the political process, it seems like, right? People would have to run for things. They'd have to um, uh, want to, uh, you know, or they'd have to get into the media game, you know? Uh, you know, they'd have to come up with, uh, you know, institutions that are media, you know, that, that provide information to people, or they'd have to run for something. Those seem to be the only two ways outside of, like, some violent revolution, right? It seems to be... Um, information and it seems to be institutional power. Those are the two things that, you know, the elite have always controlled. They've controlled information. They've controlled institutional power and institutional power controls military police, everything like that. So, I mean, if you're going to nonviolently change a country, it seems like the two ways to do it would be institutional power, which is elections and running and, you know, trying to attain some level of power, or it would be some type of media strategy where you pull your money together, you start these organizations and you start trying to get out the information that you think is vital for people to have. I mean, those are the only two things. Build some schools that are, aren't teaching what the left Look is. at what China's doing. Yeah. Just do what China's doing. Literally. I'm not even kidding. Everyone's afraid of China, you know, and I understand. I have a godson who's Chinese, who's three, and I watch, I watch him closely because I know... <laughs> I do. He you know, could I, be a spy, is what you're saying. Well, Never. he's, you know, Balloons, cult culturally, might, it's interesting to. Yeah, I'm with you on this. I, I see him, but, but. He's maybe born in a lab in Wuhan. I would have never taken a white god son, though. I want, you know what I mean? Disgusting. You need yeah, yeah, someone. Sure. You need something. DEI in yeah. the you Jim Dillon household. I want high with Asian you. Japanese Chinese. That was the request. Yeah. High end. <laughs> um, the Palm Beach of Asians. Yeah, so the reality is what they're doing, they're going around the world and they're building schools and they have this Belt and Road Initiative and what they're doing, and Kennedy explains this. Is they're going around and they're saying, we're going to um, teach our values and we're going to invest in communities and we're going to build schools and we're going to teach the things that we believe. And America, and this is what RFK has said, has always done this with a, a gun. We've always done this by saying we're going to knock over a government and we're going to install a government and we're going to do this all with military power. China has been doing it with soft power by saying... We're building schools, we're building roads, we're doing these things. And the, the end goal is the same. It's control, it's imperialism, it's we want, you know, territory, we want people to agree with us. But, you know, they're they're doing it with, with education. I think that's probably the way you have to do it is get people good information. The problem is what do you do with all the information? What is a guy that can barely afford a house whose kids are – you know, failing out of school. He can't afford tutors. He's struggling. Um, what is he going to do about fixing the CIA? I mean, that, that unfortunately to most people, that's a very, uh, you know, that's a big ask, right? <laughs> We've got 17 intelligence agencies in America. Um, you know, we have a lot of these power factions been around for a very long time. It, it seems like information is big because then people can be skeptical of these edicts that come down from the government. And it's working. It's working. You can already see they're, they don't look happy by the, the Chuck Schumers of the world. Oh. They don't look, mm -hmm. they look like they're under the gun for the first time. They look that, like they're under pressure. They, they seem to be running around, scurrying around a little bit, um, you know, because they it, worried it, about it, getting caught. They feel like they're worried about getting caught. They don't like the, the pressure, it seems like I think it is working. I think the internet is well, you know, woke. They're just going to retire. They're 80 plus years old. They'll pull up but McConnell. They but he, he but I, like I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, give you a little pushback on the China thing. I guess it just comes down to whether you like uh, actual aggression or passive aggressiveness. Because China is kind of like the um, the silent friend who talks shit behind your back. Where America's yeah. like, listen, motherfucker, let me tell you what's going on, or at least used to be. I rather, but a lot of people are rather passive aggressive. Yes, well, they China, that. They've, China's done a very great well, job of, you know, China. You know, if you look at like the, the, the Israel thing, right? I mean, listen, you know, we have a, a huge, uh, a, 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 you know, commingling of interests with Israel, right? China has been able to take more of a diplomatic, even-handed position in that, right? Russia, Ukraine, China has kind of been able to take more of an even Because they have no position. morals or values or principles, it's just the sustainability of the CCP. They don't get their... Well, they, other than uh, loading yeah. countries with mm -hmm. debt 
including themselves. Well, we've loaded a lot of countries with debt. No doubt. The United States but at least we own it, bro. This is American debt. It's proud, good. Sure. Uh, our but debt I, I'm just saying, bleeds red, white, and blue, if buddy. You, if you Not look, no commie if red. If you look at it from the perspective of, of people that are living out there on Earth, right? Not necessarily an American perspective. We all have an American perspective. We want America to be the strongest country. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're living in the Middle East. Who are you looking at right now as a future, America or China? I'll answer the question, China. I talk to people in the Middle East. They are not looking at the United States as the future. They are looking at China as the future. And one of the reasons they feel that that they're putting, number one, it's it's the population, economy, whatever. Uh, they have a billion people. They have, mm -hmm. you know, they've shown a, a tremendous ability to scale an economy that, you know, is outperforming ours in some metrics, not all of them. But they also are looking at China, and this is, again, you know, we, we don't have to agree with this. They're looking at China as a more even-handed broker of their interests than the United States. Well, Tim, it all depends on which countries you're talking to in the Middle East, because there's certainly, and this isn't even a joke, there's going to be a clash of cultures and a clash of civilizations. And it's... But do we, is that avoidable? Isn't it avoidable? I don't do think it's depend? avoidable. I think it's inevitable, and I think it's happening. Hear me out. So yeah. it, it comes down to polarity, and there's, and there's, there's, there's a, a schism that's happening in the world right now. There's order and chaos, or there's safety or freedom. So if you look in, like when Tucker did his you know, expose in the Russian beautiful uh, train yeah. systems. Look how orderly and beautiful it is. Sure. It's like, well, if you say anything or even do a little gra gra graffiti thing, no one will ever hear from you again, Navalny. But in America, we pride ourselves, or in the West, we pride ourselves on freedoms. But there's slippery slopes in each one. Yeah. Too much freedom in America, you end up like in Oregon over here where they decriminalize and legalize all drugs. They just right. reverse that. Ah, maybe a little too much freedom, but guy. Don't, but if there's a, yeah. a little too much order and a little too much safety, you think like in Saudi to, Arabia, yeah. if you, if you speak out against NBA, Yes, if you're Jamal Khashoggi, you end up dead. I agree with so you. So there needs to be a balance but don't you of think, the freedom don't you and the order and the safety. It's a big world. Not everyone's going to have the values of America. No doubt. Imposing, That's why we can't. We got to stop doing regime change imposing, and imposing democracy. I'm imposing with Imposing our values all over the world seems 100%. to be a foolhardy errand. And I just think that a lot of people look at the state of our country and they don't think we have much to export mm -hmm. right now. I'm not a fan of the way Vladimir Putin runs Russia. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people that are. They're Russians. They live there. <laughs> it's not my business. You know, we. You know, when I was a kid, we used to use. We used to hear "mind your own business" all the time. We never hear it now. No kid's ever been told that. Yeah. Our parents used to say, "Mind your own business. Shut up. Who cares?" Good point. Why is this woman across the street leaving the guy? Hey, mind your own business. We heard it all the time. Mm. All the time. Somewhere along the way, everybody's business became our business. What I mean by that is that I don't think it's my job to tell people in uh, Russia who who've, this is a society that's been around for eight, 900,000 years, whatever it is. It's not my job to tell them to have American values, liberal values, Western values, whatever. If they want to have that, that needs to be something internal to them. I don't think it's our job to fight a proxy war with Russia through the Ukraine to make Russia depose Vladimir Putin and, and install a pro-Western guy. If that's the plan here, because it doesn't work. It didn't work. You saw how we left Afghanistan. Yep. It doesn't work. So to me, I just look at it and I go, I have no interest in a class, clash of civilizations. I have an interest in a strong America. Mm. I, when you say clash of civilizations, I then feel like we are out there selling our version of the world uh, to people and then other people are selling their version of the world. And then we're all fighting yeah. and paying money and we're sacrificing lives. I don't think that needs to happen. So I would love to avoid that if we mm -hmm. could. And, you know, can we focus on America? The, you know, the, the, the comment about people in the Middle East thinking China's, uh, uh, so, you know, the future instead of U.S. It depends on what media they're watching. Depends on what news they're watching. Sure. Depends on what they're, China is right now. They have a lot of pressure. A lot of yeah. pressure. Do you know how big China's stock market is? The size of Nvidia, right. one company. No, right? for sure. They're, they're, That's it. They're, Two trillion dollars. Their size of one Nvidia is the size 
of China's stock market. The, the NVIDIA's yeah. market cap? Yes, $2 okay, trillion. Okay, $2 trillion. Dollars. Otherwise, gotcha. the, the Chinese population does not believe in their stock market. Do you know where they have 70% of their wealth? Real in estate? China? All real estate. Yeah. They, well, they, these ghost cities with everything. They trust real estate. They yeah. do not trust stock market in China yeah. at all in China. So, you know, China has still got a lot of issues to deal with, with the problems that they're having. Their age, well, they don't have a lot of young. This the whole oldest one child country in the world, that they right? Went right. Through, one of the oldest countries in the world. The bigger ones, they are the oldest mm -hmm. country in the world. I think the average age is like, you know, they're in the top three or top five. Mm -hmm. 38 uh, and a half years old, 39 years old. The average citizen is 39 years old. I think U.S. right now is 29 and a half was right. last year's numbers. And India is one of the younger ones, 27, 28. There you go. So, but what number is that? That's in 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. You got uh, 37 years old. There you go. Yeah. So, so they're dealing with this. They're trying to get kids back, uh, kids to be younger and having more of them. Their immigration, their net migration is bad. People are leaving. Uh, they're, they're afraid to leave. They're trying to find ways to leave. They're and ending up at our border somehow. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, not, I'm not even saying that they're correct when they say but the impression to, that they there's have an impression yeah, there's a perception sure. okay and mm -hmm. i mean that that that's not only in the middle east it's in parts of europe in parts of asia there there is you know that eastern sphere of russia and china and a lot of people would say that we would be smart to not push russia and china together which we we're be, doing which we're we've doing been, you know we've our, already done our guys. foreign policy yeah, right. our foreign policy has pushed them together so that to me seems like not a smart move. Except for one thing that yeah. happened this last couple of weeks. One thing that happened this last couple of weeks, and then we'll go into the next story. I want to talk about something more important, like P Diddy and Meek Mill, because that's that's yeah. stuff that's right. China Schmidt. Let, 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 let me stay on this issue, issue though. So last two weeks ago, yeah, U.S. imposed right after they killed Navalny died or got killed, whatever the story you believe in. U.S. imposed 500 sanctions on China. Okay, on, I'm sorry, 500 sanctions on Russia. Do you know what China immediately did? What? Do you know where the top four banks in the world are? All in China. Banks. HSBC. Banks. Right? Right. Yeah. Out Bank of the of four China. banks, do you know how many of the banks stopped doing business with Russia? Three out of four. Jeez. Mm. Dropped. Yeah. Three out of four banks right there. China's banks are finally getting scared by the West. They stopped doing, only one of them is left that's doing business. That's the agricultural one really? that I believe is still doing business. The other three are like, nope. Three out of the four banks, are, there you go. They accept exemptions, they sanctions, Russian financial institutions. The halt allows to use both sanctions. Yeah, so so this is what, what, what Tim is talking about right now. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of a division where, like what China's trying to say is, we're not for killing your opponent. I, that's right. kind of like publicly because right. we'll do it in private, no problem. Yeah. But no, it but, won't be but, announced. But this this could be, you know, they, they did have meetings together. They've had events together. They've had some of this stuff. Well, together. they have bricks. I mean, I that's kind of part I, of the, I get the whole that. narrative. What I'm here, saying yeah. right now is, when you do something like this, uh, is this a, and this is public. It's not like it's right. private. You cannot accept payments. Are you kidding me? This is pretty wild. That's 500 sanctions. We put on Russia. And by the way, do you know what's the first thing Trump's planning on doing when he comes on? The first things he wants to do? Bring back all, you know, the, the sanctions towards Iran, all the stuff mm -hmm. he was doing with China. He's, he's bringing that back. So U.S. is taking, the, the left is taking the approach Trump took with China and Iran. U.S. is taking that with Russia, Russia. is what they're doing. Again, going back to the proxy yeah. war. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I watched a guy today who was speaking at CPAC, a clip today, that said the next 10 months are going to be the wildest 10 months you're going to see, okay, with games, manipulation, stuff that we're not even, they haven't even launched yet Shit. that's going to be happening, right. will happen, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think to them, you know, you know what this is, if the left's motives, Chuck Schumer, what he said, if all of this stuff is true, Guess what they can't do? Let me tell you what they cannot do. You can't lose this game. So, so think elections as, let's just say, you know, game seven, right? right. You got the first to first to four wins, you know. Yep. So they've been, since Obama got in after Bush, they won one game, one term. They won two games, two terms. They lost one. So it's two to one, okay? Because uh, Trump won. They won one, which is Biden. They're now three to one playoffs. They win this, it's over. Oh, fuck. They win it. Right. This is so 
important. If they lose this, guess what it is? 3-2. Well, thank God they have a great candidate. <laughs> That's right. Joe Biden. He's the, he's the go. Yeah. Nobody's so ever gotten 81 million votes. So I you, mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know how they're going to run this guy. I, I'm hoping they, they – they, um, I want a little May surprise. They pull him and throw somebody else in. But Newsom would tank. Uh, uh, Michelle Obama won't do it. And there's no – I mean, in theory, she would be good maybe. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if in practicality. I don't know who they got. I don't know who they got. Tim, we got, we got a little bet going on around here. I don't know who they and, got. Uh, if they pull they, Biden they think they're going to pull Biden. I, I think I they're going with people, the corpse. I talked to people in Palm Beach who, in mar lago people who believe they're going to pull him in May. This is not a conspiracy theory. Well, I mean, it's something that's... Well, if it's, it's around mar lago be, But I'm sure. there are people that believe, there are people that genuinely believe Trump is not running against Biden. They're in his campaign. Oh. They believe that he's running against someone else. It might be Gavin Newsom. They don't know. They believe Biden gets pulled in May. I, but, but, but why it, May? Um, because our friend Tom was usually here. He thinks it's going to be in August, 13. which I think. Well, is when is their convention? Thirteenth. It's August, the August thirteenth. No, so I think which they, I feel the like reason is like they would incredibly pull late in, in the game. The, the reason they would pull him in May is because then you head right into the summer. No one cares. People are not paying as much attention. So I'll that, be in Mykonos. That's fine. His, um, his the person wouldn't get a ton of scrutiny over the summer. Uh, they would be kind of crowned at the convention. Then they got a few months, and then boom, there you go. By the way, did Major you see? Bet. Did you see? Uh, um, Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it, it, they 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 are trying to get in one of the movies in Spider Man. They showed Michelle Obama twenty, but it didn't say the number. Oh, oh really? Yeah. They had Michelle Obama in the movie Spider Man in the back, like you can miss. Oh, this. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's I don't one think of these she here. wants to do it. Though. Spider-Man but, but, movie but, Easter but, but, egg. Tim, don't you think she How has to? How was Spider Man's movie Easter egg teased Michelle Obama candidacy? Oh, weird. But it only shows t- uh, twenty. It doesn't show the other numbers. So if you go a little lower, maybe Control F uh, twenty. If you Control F twenty, it'll come up, Rob. Can you Control F twenty? There you go. Boom. Uh, hit it again. Uh, go one more time right there so in a blink you'll miss it in a moment across Mm. the spider verse we see a sticker on the wall of miles room that reads michelle obama 20 but you don't see the other uh, other numbers so So, but but what they're basically saying is leave it to your imagination we've got 76 more years to run michelle obama no until 2100 when the numbers change but going off of what tim said let's be honest unless he has a body double, or they drug him up. There's absolutely no way he can go up against Trump. They can't the run big, him. They cannot I, I, do it. I fully I, agree with all I, you guys. Well, no, they I, I know you're, they're going to run this corpse, no, but, but, and they're going to drug no, him up, uh, no, and he's running. No, no, but, but, I, yeah. go, but t- and Tim, uh, he's I'm, still their guy. But hold on, I, and I, Adam, and I get it because numbers yeah, don't just, lie. I'm looking well, my, at what's my, in front of me. My thing is he's eating ice cream and campaigning, and and sanity, dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever the hell is going on. The odds are that's the Vegas odds. We don't think we're we're kind of, we're awake, mm-hmm. but who besides Gavin? Because that, that's the only one that's out going to all these debates. Republican national he's he's everywhere. That little that little snake doing his no, I, I, he's mm-hmm. revering Biden. Michelle, I don't think she wants to. I think it's a uh, especially because Obama and them are running the show. Hey, you have to for the sake of the party. So mm-hmm. I know you're selling out arenas, talking about God knows what. We need you. Get your ass in there. Give us this four years. He doesn't believe that. He do, I, 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 it's yeah. not like I'm uh, By the way, super on, excited about bi- campaigning for Biden. I just we think that they're going to run would this you guy. Vote, would you vote for Michelle Obama instead of Trump? I'm not voting for anyone on the left these days. I think it's all a I joke. I that attitude. But I, attitude. I will tell you who's making some waves. And his numbers are going up and up and up and up and up. And his name is Bobby Kennedy, and he's 20 to 1 now. No, they'll never and run him. They'll never run him. Who, who do you mean they're never going to run him? The Democratic Well, party. no, he's going to run as an independent. He'll never win. He'll never win. He'll never win. Well, his he's odds. Got no shot. Uh, well, uh, according to the shot. odds, he's got a twenty to one shot. Michelle, right. look at what Michelle. I'm is. just. I'm following he's the money no here, shot. guys. It's, it's going to be Trump unless it, they they throw a. Uh, there's some type of. I don't know. You know, there's got to be like an October surprise that's really like you said, very exciting. But I I, I think if they run Biden, they lose. Um, I don't know who they could run. Where I would. I mean. On paper, Michelle's a good candidate. We don't know how she would do. You just don't know. You don't know. On you know, on paper, she's a good candidate. We don't know. Um, the other people, there's no name recognition with like a, a Gretchen Whitmer or a, no. These are VP candidates yeah, that are that are oh, servicing. Okay. But, 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 but I got to ask you this. Yeah. Um, look, 
the, the Ross Perot, 1992, made some ways as a third party candidate. Yeah. This guy was five foot four, and he talked like this, and he kind of, kind of, he was kind of sure. like a, a John yeah. kind of. Uh, Bobby Kennedy's a legit dude. Well, other than his raspy voice, I mean, you've had him on the podcast. Yeah, Great yeah. podcast I, with I him like and him a lot. Cheryl. Yeah. Theo Vaughn said that he would vote for him we in an all instant. Like him. Why do you think he's got a chance? Because he, the numbers are not at all trending in the direction where you would put him in the running. He's not, if you look at the polls, I mean, mm -hmm. this is not, I mean, just as an analyst, again, I like him and I think he would probably be a really good president um, as much as you can judge anyone for a job, right? You know, you, you hiring is, Gary Vee said once, hiring is guessing. He told that, he said that to me and that kind of made sense, I guess. Um, but I, I don't think that you could like predict how he Com like against Trump, I you know, and whoever else in the Democrat, mm -hmm. do you see RFK winning against Trump? No, no. Absolutely. I think if you get those three guys, you know, the the but old and senile versus the old and angry, and versus the fit and uh, vocal vocally challenged RFK. See. If you get them on a debate stage. I truly think that RFK is going to make noise and waves and call imagine. out both sides. I, like I feel RFK like there's a such I mean, a yearning in this country for a third party candidate. I think Patrick to step will, in. will agree with me here. Do you see any way you're putting your money on RFK beating Trump? There's no. not. There is not no, a, a not possibility. Patrick would not put a dollar on that. He's no, the only no, candidate that actually has a favorable and I, approval rate. By the way, and, and it's great. I mean, you, you, ought to, you ought to go bet on this. If you're right. 20 to 1, put $1,000. You put win 20 grand. You guys, you know what? Win. Maybe I we, will. We, we I like him. I like him a would, lot. Yeah, you know? there's nobody here. I don't think. I like the guy. I don't think anybody here doesn't like him. I think the, the part that you have to be thinking about is, is the following. So remember how Vivek, everybody would ask and say, how the hell is Vivek only at 7%? Or 8%. This is so weird. Right. Why is he at 7 or 8%? Because his message was 100% the same message as Trump's message, which means what? If right. there was no Trump, Vivek <laughs> would be at 52%, right. Right? right? Yep. So you have no idea how curious I am where Vivek would be in 2028. Wow. I am so curious to see where he would be in 2028 because... Maybe it's because of the mathematical side of me where I just kind of want to see, is that really the, the, the reasoning? Because establishment, he's not an establishment. I don't guy, think so that's the like only it. reasoning, right? you got to look at across the board, right? It's Maybe not, religion, maybe background, maybe skin all, color. There's all of that. There's Name also, recognition. How long do we know this person? Right. Now, you know, how long have we seen them? Do we... Do we have any level of trust? Do we, you know, I think it's hard, it's hard to, you know. Well, look, I mean, I, I fully agree with you. We, we've known Vivek's name for maybe 24 months, yeah. and that's generous. The Kennedy name is as everlasting and as so great of an American gonna name. Go back to it. I'm no, going to go to the no, next No, no, what story. I'm saying yeah. is we've known Trump for 50 years. Right. Biden's been a politician 50 years. It's name recognition. Yeah, oh, th then guess what then? The, Vivek the, oh, doesn't have yep. it yet. But you ready for this? That's all, all I'm right. saying. The Michelle, the Obama name, you know those 81 million votes that Biden got? Mm -hmm. They're going to go for her 1,000%. She will not you have could a problem. Be right. she you could be right. She won't do it. I don't, I don't, I'm not a believer in Michelle. She has, I don't think she has an interest. I think interest she has in to. I think she has to for the party. I don't think she has an interest in it. Do you want to bet? <laughs> I, I wonder if, if, if you believe this is a dark business. Yeah. Here's what you have to believe. How much you think Michelle cares about her and her husband's legacy? A good amount. What's a good amount? Is that a number one? Is that a top three? Do they value their legacy more than their freedom? Yes. And their, they, yes. Might, they might feel that this tarnishes their legacy because, by the way, here's the other thing. She doesn't beat Trump. Sorry. She doesn't. Michelle Obama doesn't beat Trump in the general. This is such a cooked up idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I even have fallen prey to it myself, but I don't know if she wins. I think it might be the best chance, but still, do you see Michelle? And I mean, I ask you again, you're a business guy. Yeah. Are you putting money on Michelle beating Trump? No, that's not, that's not no. the question though. Okay. That's not the question. The question is the following. Do you believe legacy is the most important thing to them or the life they live, the lifestyle of the rich and famous celebrity Hollywood, George Clooney. What do you think they value the most? Combination, but I do think legacy is a big Fair. consideration. Okay, do you think 
they became presidents by themselves or a lot of a people? A lot of people. Okay. okay. So do you think a certain set of puppet masters helped them become presidents? Thousand percent. Great. Then guess what? They're owned. Then if you're I, owned, yeah. then the people who own are going to come knocking on the door. And do yes. you think in the political space, I, the people... The, not, not everything you own behaves the way you want. Well, watch this. Mm -hmm. though. But, but let's stay on this topic yeah, yeah. here. Let's remember how this whole thing you were saying, conversation starts with this and it leads somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Like yes, the whole thing with comedy curiosity. Yeah. Okay, fair. But do you think the people who owned and pushed have intel on them that nobody has, a has access to, including the world, you Absolutely. and I. Absolutely. Fair enough. So what if that meeting, do you think a meeting would take place where the meeting goes like this? Michelle, um, we're going to need you to run. And she's going to fight it. And he's going to fight it. And then it's going to say, we don't want to make this bad and ugly. We yeah. want this thing to be civil. We don't want all the information to come out. We work very hard to protect your legacy. Yeah. I think, you know, the other people will not be happy because it's always going to be the other people are not going to be happy because right. they helped you get there. They want you to run and they're willing to back you up and they're going to put $2 billion up and you're going to be running for four years. We can put somebody else after that, but for now we're going to need you to run. Yeah. Do you think that kind of a meeting has taken place? I think that the, the, the problem I have with that kind of meeting, number one, is I, I think that whatever they have on the Obamas would severely damage the Democratic Party. I don't think they would leak stuff that would damage the Democratic Party if these are Democratic power brokers. I also don't know how convinced they are that Michelle Obama would beat Trump. I'm not convinced. I just am not convinced. I think it might, you know, on paper it looks good. But think about it. Have we ever seen Michelle Obama in any type of political debate? No. Have we ever? We've never seen her as no. a politician. No. The reason she's so popular is because she's never gotten into the muck. When they go low, we go high. All that yeah. stuff. She's been able to have the luxury of doing that because she's been a political spouse. If she becomes a poli I mean, Hillary Clinton um, lost twice. To a first-term senator. Michelle's more likable than Hillary. Hillary oh, is the least is, liked person she, in America. For in sure, politics. but Michelle is has the advantage of never having been a politician. She's a politician. She hasn't had wife. to get down, down, down and dirty. She hasn't said. had to yeah. ever really, you know, she's never been, you know, back against the wall fighting. Trump won, and he had never been a politician. You know, he had Trump never done debate. Trump is a much different character than Michelle. Yeah. Trump is a Obama. monster in a good way. Well, I mean, like, he's been he's, so funny. He's, he's been in every select. rap song right. ever. He had well, the apprentice. But guys, he's let a, me tell you. So, so listen, are you convinced that Dems are going to give up this one loss and go three to two and let Trump run? No, I, I, I yeah. fully okay, do then, not then think they want to see Trump. Put they, Newsom ahead of Michelle and I, I'm shocked that Gavin Newsom's down. odds aren't higher than Michelle's. Well, I don't well, get it. And so, if you think about it, uh, and Tim, to go to, to your point, but to go a little bit backwards, she was recently on the On Purpose podcast where she said, I am terrified about what could possibly happen if Trump wins in 2024 she, it's basically saying yeah, that's every she, democrat though. no 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 no. but but for her to be saying she, hold on there's i'm worried she's terrified that means she's she's basically saying she's losing sleep because of this threat these are just little nuggets that, that doesn't mean she's we'll gonna see. run though we'll see, we'll see. let's go we'll to see. the next story we'll see well let's go to the next story so epstein okay yeah uh ron DeSantis yesterday comes out and you saw what rob if you want to do we have that story here rob somewhere DeSantis, uh, right there okay page four ron DeSantis signs legislation okay uh, to authorize the release of Jeffrey Epstein's grand jury documents. New legislation signed by Florida governor will allow public release of the jury's transcript from 2006 probe into Epstein's abuse of underage girls. The new measure goes into effect July 1st. Epstein pleaded guilty to state uh, charges and sentenced to 18 months in jail. After cutting a deal with federal prosecutors in 2008, he was required to register as a sex offender. The law would shed some light on the grand jury testimony and would have limited expectations, exceptions to provide greater insight. Da, 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 da. DeSantis said the public deserves to know who participated in the Epstein sex trafficking. Yeah. Nobody should be protected from facing justice due to their wealth or status. And those who harm children should be exposed and punished to the fullest extent of law. Tim.
What do you think is going to happen here with Epstein? You think we're really going to eventually find out who the people are or not? I don't know. I mean, they keep doing this, right? They yeah. keep doing, I mean, this is like the ninth time they've said this. They're like, no one should be above the law. Yeah. I mean, it's like, this is all they say all the time. They go, no one should be above the law. And you go, okay. And then nothing really ever happens. It's the same five people you've heard. It's like Prince Andrew. It's the same people. And then they go, well, you know, we're going to now release this thing. I, I don't know. I just, I think you have to wait and see if you ever figure out. If these people all run the world and they all have all this money and they have all, all have all this power, and I think all of those things are true, I believe those things. It, I mean, are you gonna are we are they gonna be, are, are people knocking on the door? Like, I, I can't imagine that we're gonna find out all of the you know b- b- perpetrators of these. Acts. You think is there's gonna be Jelaine? She's the fall guy or fall girl, and and that's who I, it is, I and that's the only I don't accountability. Know. You know, I don't know. Things are so chaotic now that you could see stuff leaking. But I mean, has has the other shoe dropped? Have we? They've also done this amazing job, right? And I've made fun of them for this on on my show. Is they've been like, well, all these names are out, but n- n- this means nothing. It proves nothing. It, it suggests nothing. Clinton was on his plane a bunch of times, and he's mentioned 50 times in the documents, but it doesn't mean anything. The media comes out and goes, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, I think they've watered it down to the point where, like, whatever names come out now, Ugh. people are going to go, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean they did anything. It just means that they knew the guy. I, They've done a good job of watering down what these things actually mean. Mm-hmm. And to a point where I think people are kind of like, well, sure, he was mentioned 50 times in the, you know, <laughs> uh, the court Arnold documents. Yeah. But what does that but, even and mean? The, and the media has also done a good job because nobody's reading those documents. They just look at pictures. Yeah. And they've also done a good job of infusing a couple Trump picks in, in there. Yeah. Yeah, which, even though which he wasn't on the bullshit. plane or yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. But they'll infuse that to be yeah. like, well, they're all doing it. You got one, you got one gift for Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Santa's only going to do one for you. Yeah. Okay. Out of all this stuff that you could find out about, like who was behind was the election fraud, Trump 2020, did anybody, like, was there something going on there? Yeah. You know, China, COVID, were they behind it? And Fauci's involvement with, you know, all the additional yeah. thinking IH. A hundred percent list of the names on Epstein. Every single mm-hmm. thing you can know with this. John F. Kennedy assassination, who was behind it? You put that on the list as well. The moon landing, was it real, was it not real? 9-11, was Lex Wexner behind it and all these other money people? And, you know, was it an explosion? Was yeah. it this? If out of all of those things, you can, you can by the way, Hunter Biden laptop, the big yeah. guy, the money. Yeah. Roswell, New any, Mexico, aliens. Choose any of those guys, you can have one gift from Santa. Which one do you want? 9-11 is, is where I grew up with 9-11. That was the seminal event of my childhood. Yeah. So to me, I would want to know what the deal is a little bit more than I do. I'm not even saying that it's like a, you know, an inside thing, but I would want to know, like, why did we protect Saudi Arabia? Uh, w- were those guys Rob, run a poll. Run a poll. I'm curious, people, if you're listening as well, but go, what do we run the intelligence? Yeah, like, what, what's the deal? To exactly how it happened, up to the minute how it happened. Is it exactly what they say? I would just be interested in that, because that was a big event of my childhood. Is it minute for minute exactly what they say? Are those 19 guys random guys from the Middle East? Were they trained intelligence people? How did all of that happen? That to me would be very interesting. I think I know a lot of the other ones, or at least I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the belief that the Epstein thing would not shock you. If the names came out about the Epstein thing, it wouldn't shock you. would be a bunch of billionaires and world leaders. You'd go, right, right. You wouldn't be shocked. Kennedy would be the CIA. Wouldn't shock you. Um, COVID uh, would be a joint lab of the U.S. and China in Wuhan where there might have been a leak. Was it intentional or not? We don't know, but that's all kind of there. RFK's book talks about that. Um, you know, I don't know that those would be that shocking. Uh, they might be. I don't know. You know, the laptop, uh, Hunter Biden, is a good question. I mean, I don't know, you know? I, I, I love, by the what's way, the, the Biden- top, What's at the top of your list, what's BBD? The top of your list? I, can, I got one, but... I, got, I, I was going to say... And because I, I, being from being from, and by New the way, York, you may I'm, even say something I haven't even said. See, yeah, because I'm I'm a big I'm, mind you, I don't believe absolutely nothing, and I worked for the government. I was in the military. No one knew you may even say the flu game for Michael. I mean, I, you can because priorities <laughs> are different, that's right? For a people, different priority. Go ahead. But because I, dude, I, we know. I'm saying my firm opinion. We know what happened with 9/11. I would definitely love to know what the plan was. What did they did they put explosives in to make sure everything went down? I'd love to know that. But right now, the the, but the hottest thing on my list right now, I would want 
Every single one of those tapes that they have of Epstein that he recorded everything. I want that played, and I want to show every single one of these assholes from Clinton to everybody. Hold on, lot Pat in the courtroom, huge, not a regular one, big courtroom, and I want to play every because he ha- they have those tapes. Is that that's Bill Clinton right there? That's you with the underage girl. Put his ass in jail. I want accountability for every child, every underage child. That's been their lives ruined by all these elites, and I want accountability held by all these assholes. I'm That's shocked me. you didn't God, say the it's... Taylor Swift thing. I mean, you've been ranting and raving so, on I that know forever. That, I know the truth about her. Okay. She's, a She's playing for the NFL. She's a witch. But anyway. What do you got? What do you got? I mean, all these are completely explainable. 9-11, some, t- some of the stuff, you know, coincidence theories, to use that term. Thank you. You know, it could have just been as simple as these... Islamic hijackers wanted, inspired by Osama bin Laden, wanted to crash the planes, okay? Uh, it could have just been as simple as the CIA and was it Alan Dulles and he, he was fired after the Bay of Pigs invasion and your buddy Sirhan Sirhan, you know, the Bobby Kennedy yeah, yeah. situation. CIA, it could just be as simple as uh, Epstein was doing some weird shady shit, blackmailing people. I, I'm giving you a couple different things. Anything that has to do with aliens and space I want to know what the hell is going why, on. And here's why. And by the way, and this is not to insult you. Yes. That is the conspiracy for stupid people. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> it's just under ghosts in terms of what dumb people want to know about. It's the thing. You see people, people. You see Air Force dumb people talking people about it. When when aliens or ghosts come up, dumb people's eyes bulge out of their head. They go. <laughs> Yes, it's my time. You know why? Because we don't know shit about shit. We have no, these other ones affect our lives. We know the people. As you said, they should be brought to justice. Listen, there was just an alien aliens. sighting in Miami. Who Everyone saw him, bro. Was, Everyone it was, saw him. I woke up to that in Miami at the mall with the aliens. I go, who cares if it's true? <laughs> it, Do you, you think know? we landed on the moon? Probably. <laughs> you can't even stand for Who's something, Tim. There's is no effect on my life. The Zero. aliens? Aliens have no effect on our lives. None. What about the illegal aliens coming a through the border? Huge bad. Bad. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, now, by the way, good and bad. You, you know, but yeah. you know what Biden's calling them now, by, by the way. What? They're no, no longer Ill- Ill- illegal aliens. They Occup- They're now called newcomers. Oh, God. Okay. Welcome newcomers oh, to America. Better? Does that sound better? Illegal. It's branding, guys. Everyone thinks Trump's the branding guy and the marketing guy. Right. The newcomers. That that Biden, sounds- here it is right here. Have Biden's prison to the Mexico border. He called the Limo immigrants coming from the country. Hey, welcome, newcomers. That sounds... You come know on, come on, like, bienvenido. That sounds better when, when one of them kills a girl like Lake and In Ryan, Georgia, a yeah. Old, and ready for this? She was killed by an illegal alien or a newcomer raped and murdered her. It, had well, the, you know yeah, what it softens it. Rob, can you pull up that one blow. clip? Yeah. That one, and by the way, pull up that one clip I sent you of... The guy in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, <laughs> Tim, whatever you said, my phone's blown up with text messages of what? people liking what you said. But uh, <laughs> can you pull up? Pro- probably calling me dumb, I'm assuming. <laughs> It was indirect. It was indirect. You just said you get a blanket. It was a blanket. Bing, Can you pull Tim, everyone <laughs> needs haters. I encourage you to get as many as possible. All right. So, so Some people up, just live their life to up, hate. Pull up this clip. This is, by the way, there's nothing funny about this clip, but I, Jen shared this with me while I was uh, uh, out of town in St. Augustine. I'm like, what the hell is. Go ahead and play this clip, okay? Who is it? Oh. What? in the actual fuck. Seriously, this is why my goddaughter is not allowed to have social media. I was just waiting in line at a pet store just to get dog food. And there was a full grown man standing in line in front of me. Like so much back hair peeking out, but not very much on top, looking like a werewolf with alopecia. And I can see him on his phone, scrolling Instagram. And every single post was little girls, like small baby children. And he literally stopped on some mommy bloggers post and zoomed in to certain parts of that photo. And I did confront him. I said, what are you doing? And he fumbled his phone away and said, nothing. I said, well, it looked like you were being a (laughs) the P word. And this man actually had the nerve to look at me in my gay little eyes and say, we don't like that term. It's actually minor attractive. Oh, the maps. That's the part. Okay, so here's what I now say. This this person, uh, the very effeminate gay person catching pedophiles, should run 
instead of Michelle Obama. <laughs> this person has <laughs> yeah, he has, he, your has, votes. He has <laughs> it. it. This, guy, is, this is uh, good. Uh, I like yeah. I like What's the idea the Democratic Convention. This guy, like, you're acting like a. Um, <laughs> I'm not assuming that he's gay, no, but yeah. do you think America's ready no, no, for a gay president like this? Oh, what do you mean? We probably already yeah, have. They're catching pedophiles yeah. in What's McDonald's. That's the most American thing Michael you can do. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Yeah. I, I'd they vote for, for him. him. I'd vote for him. Mm-hmm. What, what is the... Um, what was that? I mean, what is it? What, I don't know what the post is. I mean, what is that? You know why I brought this up? Because okay. we said yeah. newcomers, like the terms yeah. they're gotcha. changing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. said minor attracted person, how they're okay. changing the name. Is that true, though? Is anyone doing that? I mean, they, maps? Y- yeah. Maps? They call it maps. Bro, they got really? an acronym for it, bro. Oh, yeah. I've not heard about maps. It's the new ISIS. I've heard about maps in the sense that, like, it's a joke, but I didn't know that was a real. No, no. I thought it was like an internet yeah. troll, but that's no. crazy if no, that no, no. actually happened. But yeah. it's M the Edge, Medical Doctor Edge, minor. Or attracted person, can you click on this so we can read it? We'll actually go to it. Tim. This is good. We're getting yeah. smarter today. That's a dumb okay. So the definition of mine and attracted person, I mean, approximately, they're, they're neglected. Dude, check this, this out. The hel- almost hilarious. This is crazy. Tim, go a little who lower. Is writing this? They're neglected Why, people. Tim. Go, Tim. By the way, who, both people who wrote it is <laughs> Janet and Renee. They're both doctors. Go lower, Rob. Of course. A prop- approximately one in five Americans report childhood sex abuse. 50 to 65% of child abuse victims uh, uh, in the absence of pedophilic interest. Anyways, this goes on. And yeah. You can go to, go to the prior page, Rob. I heard a bunch of people talking go about Go bottom to see if there's a Wikipedia that explains this as well. National uh, Institute. Go up a little bit on the, yeah, minor attracted persons. Oh, no, it's real. Yeah. Dude, you, gotta, you, have to, you have to soften that. That dude, pedophilia yeah. gets such a bad rap. Yeah, sickos or just, scumbags. Well, some of these, some offensive. of the newcomers might be maps. <laughs> you and think? Matt, what do you imagine that? You think? Yeah. Imagine yeah. Right I had there. no idea that was an. A- I thought it was a troll on the internet. You know, how certain things are like jokes. But I, I mean, now we're living in a time. It's hard to know what is and isn't real. Oh, what yeah. is and isn't a joke? It's, let me let me ask it's you. Unreal, yeah. You're in line yeah. at Starbucks, and yeah. you experience similar thing. A guy, mid fifties, sixties. Is looking at girl pictures, six uh, years old, eight years old, ten yeah. years old. What do you do? I record him watching that, and then I confront his ass. I'm f- I'm stepping to his. What ass. do you do? Is it and is I'm it just mind your own business? Plate. Do we go back to? I 80s? ask him to green light a show for me on NBC. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> or on the BBC. I what do you mean, Luke? Did you get it? It was great. It was that was a little too good. That was perfect. That was a little too good. They would never, Tim. But, but, you that, know, I would do that, that cult of personality. Pat, over I there. would record him doing it, and then I would follow him to his car and get his license plate and have all that on footage and send it to the to the cop. You got a nephew. What do you do if you that? see that? If he's doing that, what is he getting ready to do? That's he's setting him. He's priming himself. Yeah. What should you do if you see that though? I can't punch him. I don't want to go to jail for punching him, but I'm gonna I'm gonna record him and his car. I period. Mean, I, I think you just start off license, with uh, license plates. Maybe a good idea. Yeah, see something, that, say something. You know, yeah. maybe he's somebody's already looking for the guy. Like maybe yeah. he's. I don't know, a, a sex offender, and he's already doing something. I don't. But know. But guys, he likes dog. I mean, he's buying dog well, stuff. He's at least nice to dogs. But he, like, well, in any situation, it's kind of like what Tim said: is there's the mind your business factor, not, and then not, there's not, the nope. you see something, say something factor. If he, yeah. if I, I think if you see that, you start with a you good, bro, and what, see how he responds. But what if he and if, and if he goes face. no, if he's like oh oh or mind your business, well that's what so he's said. like no, this is my granddaughter and I love her. Like right. I would want a little more clarity before I'm uh, recommending him for on the authorities. Flight. One time I'm on a flight, okay, yeah, and. A 50-year-old man is sitting in front of us. I'm dating this girl. And this other girl, 13 years old, pregnant, is sitting in front of us. Okay? 13. She looks 13 on a good day. Okay. Okay? And the girl I'm with points it out. Says, can you do me a favor? Listen to their conversation. So I'm listening to their conversation. And I'm like, "What, what is he asking? Like, who is this person to this person? So I go to the bathroom. I come back. I want to see her face. Okay. You can tell she does not look normal. There's something that's going on. You can tell Mm -hmm. he looks like a full on asshole. Okay. Are they sitting next to each other? Right next to each other. Where's your flight going? Where are you going? I don't know what it is, but it was long enough where you can try to start a conversation to learn. What does she do? She starts asking her questions. Hey, hi, how are you? So where are you from? And 
she's sparking a conversation. Imagine like two seats here, two seats gotcha. here. I'm yeah, not first you. class. We're sitting in, yeah, yeah. you know, second class type of stuff. Yeah. So we're this sitting must there. have been years ago, people. This is this 25 is, years yeah. ago. Years. Years. Years ago. Years. Right? <laughs> so anyway, so we're sitting there and then and she starts talking and she he gets upset. Hey, mind your own business. Oh. So at this point, we're mm. like, dude, something's going on. He says, what should we do? I said, talk to the flight attendant. So goes and talks to the flight attendant. The flight attendant then comes back and starts talking to the girl, okay? And a girl is getting nervous. And the guy says, this is my uh, granddaughter. Says, really, it's your granddaughter? Yes. But he's fumbling. He can't answer. Of course. Okay? It was the weirdest exchange of what took place. They, on the flight out, they called the cops. The flight attendant called the cops. The cops took the... We don't know what happened afterwards, by the yeah. way. But the cops took the... The guy? The guy and the girl, and they went to a room. From there, we have no idea what happened. Wow. So this, some of this stuff is happening, and sometimes that kid... You know, they said there's a sign, like if, if somebody if somebody is kidnapping you, you're in like the a car, duress, there's duress a sign man. that you put a hand out, yeah. and that sign What's is a sign no. of being, yeah. Yeah, you're being kidnapped. No, it's actually the sign is in the car. You, if you pull the window down, the kidnapper's not going to let you pull the window yeah. down. You have to have a certain sign that you do here, and apparently that's the there's sign that you're being signal? kidnapped. Yeah. So hold on, after you get off the flight... And they took him away. Where did Bill we Clinton wait. go after that? Ah, you're funny. <laughs> just, you're funny. Where did Bill go? But the point is, these types of people are out there. I think half the time is, you know, awareness, asking the yeah, questions. You could have really changed somebody's life there by mm -hmm. helping. You know, that's a good thing. No, but the fact For that sure. we went to the fl uh, the flight attendant mm -hmm. and the cops took over, we're waiting outside at the gate. Nothing comes out. No, We, we had no idea what ended up I, happening with I that. I never... Look, even in the back <laughs> of, the, of plane. the plane, no. I, Patrick, Patrick, I'm, telling you, right, Patrick, I'm telling you right now that the human trafficking that could be going on in coach, <laughs> I would have no, I yeah. have no, that I, I would once have that no curtain idea. is closed. I mean, the bombs they could be making in coach, they point. could be running sweatshops. Yeah. I would have no idea. Yeah. Illegal child labor, like, oh, knitting, <laughs> knitting uh, Gucci handbags. I have no idea. Um, and if you're getting human trafficked in first class, it's like it could be worse. Cra so I don't, get, I don't get involved. By the way, cr craziest story on flights that you've yeah. been on. Who has been the craziest person on a flight with you that, that they don't travel with you, that you were flying and you're like, we're in L.A., so you've flown yeah. a lot of weird people. So yeah. who was on a flight where like that guy was on? I got a few of them. Who was yours? Um, I've had some interesting people. Uh, I had Chelsea Handler on a flight once, and I don't. I, I, My I ex. made fun of Chelsea a few times. As of you know, as of, in a is story, there anything more fun than that? She's fun, and uh, she just she was very kind of like uh, I don't know. I don't think she even knew who I was or whatever. But she sat like right there, and I, that was when I wasn't in first class. I was behind, and she was you know she was very kind of like abrupt looking and tough and. You know, she was, you know, that New York to L.A. run or the L.A. to yeah, New York run. They're, yeah. they're a tough yeah. group of people that just mm -hmm. keep going back and forth. Yeah. That six hour nightmare yeah. flight. And, you know, she was fun. I had Gail King once, Oprah's lover. Wow. Had, Oprah's lover. Um, <laughs> Are they Oprah still together? Or? Lover. You see how you split yeah. that through? No way. Hey, she's no. a billionaire. Yeah. She deserves a lover. Yeah. Um, In Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, Poor Stedman. Sure. Montecito. Gail plays tennis. Yeah. Uh, I had Gail King. Um. But yeah, to me, it's always people that are very demanding that are my favorite. We were on a very short flight once from like, I don't know, it was like uh, Cincinnati to New York. It was really, really short. It was not a long flight. And there was just a, you know, a, a guy who had like, you know, he, he smoked a cigarette in the bathroom. They had to make him sign a paper. He had to like sign some document acknowledging that he smoked in the bathroom. It was just like it's an hour and 10 minute flight. It's just there's certain people on planes you feel mm. bad for. You go, man, you're in a bad way. Like something you can't. Something's not. Can't smoke a cigarette for two hours. If you can't, can't whatever your no. thing is. I mean, it just seems you got like, something. PBD? I got one. I had go somebody that had a heart attack and they were like, oh, you know, when shit. they stand up. And, no, I'm dead serious. And they're like, is there anybody you hear the intercom? They're like. Is there a medical, anybody, doctor, nurse? Well, that'll freak you out. People, what? by the way, when that happens, other yeah. people start having anxiety attacks. Holy true, shit, me what too. do you mean? Me and too. I, listen, so I, I stood up. I'm like, I'm not a That's doctor. That's the worst on a flight. I can cheer them up. I'm like, I can make the guy laugh. He's supposed to be going on his way out. But the guy literally had a heart attack. He survived. What did you have? But not good. Did you have? I've had some cool people on flights, but the most memorable story wasn't even on the flight, it was in the airport. And uh, this was a story from like 10 years ago. I was, I was, I went to, 
you know, there's a bunch of big insurance companies in Fort Wayne, Indiana, as yeah. you know, and it's right near where my family lives in Detroit. And I remember for, it was Easter and my grandmother, neurotic Jew, she's like, well, you have, there's a flight on Easter. You got to, it's going to be crazy there. And we got to get you there super early. Cause usually if you know, you go an hour early, two hours early, I'm there four hours early before a flight. Cause grandma thinks that Easter is going to be the travel day of the year. Turns out airport was completely empty because yeah. nobody's traveling on Easter. They're already where they got to go. So I go to this bar and they're like, you know, they're taking down the, the stools of the bar. And I look over and I'm like, that is the tallest black guy I've ever seen in my life. Like his leg was basically touching Tim Dillon over here. And I go, holy shit, that's Minute Bull. No way. That's and cool. and I go over boy. there <laughs> and yeah. I go and I and he's arguing on the phone. He's like, it be Oh, and I want to change my flight. And he's like yelling with the, like he's African, right? And the lady has no clue what he's well, saying. I mean, he's going to change his flight no matter where he goes. No, he could, he could, he couldn't change his though. flight. I'll give you a few. I ended up drinking at the bar with you uh, my new ball for four story. hours. I paid the bill. It was amazing. And uh, he was the, the, the his, most his his likable son, guy ever. Bo Bo, Bo, they Bo. say he's the first Wemby before there was a Wemby. But, yes. but so one time, Ron Jeremy was on a flight. Fast. Really, PBD. You should have seen the way people reacted to Ron Jeremy. It was so funny. Suge Knight, okay? That's funny. Girls were fl uh, flirting with Suge Knight. Bill O'Reilly, while I'm going to Vegas, he was mm. doing this show with Dennis Miller. This is when I was traveling a lot from Burbank in LA. But the most interesting one was uh, Quiet Riot. Do you remember the, the band Quiet Riot? The Russian? Heavy metal, whatever. Yeah, type in Quiet Riot. These guys were a heavy metal band. Yeah, these guys. They're all the way in the back of the flight, okay? And these guys were massive. These, this lady comes up and says, hey, um, you know, starts flirting with them. And says, ma'am, you know how tired I am right now. I am so not into it. it. This is not the 20s and 30s when we spend all our money on cocaine. He just joked about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, very interesting. <laughs> Tim, you know what he's talking yeah. about. It's a very interesting uh, thing. To, so he's in the, he's in sitting in the... Last, last, uh, last uh, absolute seat. last seat. Okay, interesting. And they're putting their stuff, their guitars, whatever right. it is. And I'm like, who are you guys? And I'm thinking, you know, quiet. they are quiet, right? And I mean, quiet, right? Today, you're not going to know who they are. Right. But in the, they're very quiet the, these days. The 80s, mental, mental health, 80s, 90s, they were like one of the top, top guys. But the hair yeah. bands. The average come person is not going to recognize feel them. The noise. Right. Those yeah. guys were, yeah, come feel the noise. Yeah. Except Girl, it's not spelled not like that. It's not spelled, not spelled like that. For yeah, sure. I just mean, yeah, got a spelling error that he had. Anyways, okay. Um, let's do the last one and then we'll wrap up. So, yeah. the, uh, the Vinny, what's going on with this P. Diddy stuff? Maybe give me the P. Diddy. Have and you heard anything about the, the Diddy thing, too? I, I, I mean, I hear he's being charged with rape or something. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. he's being so there's a new lawsuit right now by uh, well, Rodney Little Rod Jones. And he's just, but, but dude, apparently, f allegedly, in all these court documents, Diddy is like the Epstein of the rap game. So they're saying he's had orgies. He had, you know, he apparently shot a guy, but, you know, because he had this security guard named Fahim Muhammad, who was Diddy's security guard. You know who else's security guard he was? Michael Jackson's security guard. When he, like, he was like the second person on the scene uh, when he died. So he's saying it goes back 30 years of, of sexual blackmail. Usher, Meek Mill, Justin Bieber, all these people are are inside of it. Justin it, Bieber, he, bro, he's saying. What? But, 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 but I mean, if you're right? gonna take so, advantage of a little so, kid, he's well, the cute. Hold on, hey Rob, can you just show, show the video of of like just it's just kind of weird. Not this one, the, the 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 other one with him. This is him hanging out with Diddy. This it's just weird. Like this is him. Look how young. You know, like as soon as you turn sixteen, like it's just weird. Sure, let you rock this every time. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, look at he's just a little kid. Okay. It's a little dusty, but you know. So he's been hanging out with him. Yeah. yeah. It, Man. How old is Bieber here? You think? Fifteen. So Fourteen. Yeah, Fifteen. Oh, 15. Okay. All right. So, so I'm gonna be driving this. So the. Yeah. Right. So they're being accused. So, so they're, yeah. well, they're, they're, yeah. so what are the accusations? What they're is at, at these house parties that he was having, uh, this is in the uh, in the lawsuit. He had underage girls. Uh, they would spike drinks. Everybody from the butler, the chef, the housekeeper had to walk around him with a pouch fanny pack filled with cocaine, ecstasy, gummies to whoever. If pity, I'm still pity. waiting for the problem. The <laughs> You're so stupid. But uh, they accused Combs of, you know, brandishing guns, bragging about shooting people. He hooked up with um, 
what was his name? Clive Davis. And he's saying, because mind you, there's a CIA agent that came out. His name was John Holmson that said he admitted that the CIA uh, created gangster rap to fill private prisons and glamorize criminality. Basically, it's not looking good uh, for, for Diddy. Uh, it's just all the house parties, all the orgies. And this guy. The, these the, are accusations. These are accusations in the lawsuit. But right. this guy is saying that he would, they would spike all the drinks that this people would just be getting shit faced. And sometimes unbeknownst to him, this guy said he woke up from getting drugged at one of these things. And he's like, he's in a bed. Diddy's in the bed. Some other person's in the bed. It's just not a lot of. What's this? How is Meek Mill tied to this? By the well, way, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of rumors going out that him and Meek Mill uh, were hooking up, and now Meek Mill is basically going after Tate. Tate, by the way, this is all again alleged in this lawsuit, but it's like it's not stopping for Diddy. And then uh, the rumor came out with uh, Meek Mill with Diddy, and then what did Tate, what did Tate, Tate? Maybe go on the Twitter. I'm still trying to see like what. So so what is this? So the story is the only thing I saw. I he, saw I saw the fact that. Pull up the Meek Mill tweet, whatever that is. Uh, uh, and why, you, you had it on earlier, Rob. Why is looking Pat? You know what he's saying? That he was, Diddy had cameras set up all over the house like Epstein, and he was blackmailing everybody that was coming to the house. So, so Andrew Tate uh, tweets, so P. Diddy was having sex with Meek Mill and Usher? Question mark, right? Meek Mill retweets, quote retweet, and says, was you trafficking women? The fuck is wrong with you, you Brody? Brody? And then Andrew Tate asks, I only asked the question because everyone is saying it happened. So, right? by the way, everybody's talking about it. So, uh, like, that's why they're mm -hmm. calling him, you know. The by the way, that tweet today is 41 million views. Wow. It's eight and a half there, but it's 41 million. The question is, why would you respond like that, Meek Mill? Yeah. So, you responding, you're kind of not. You're not saying, yeah. what are you talking well, about? He's but, but, but they're saying for 30 years, because think about it. Diddy, yeah. bad boy. Dude, Diddy went 24 years old. Uh, they're saying he, he helped kill uh, Tupac. Biggie dies. He is at 24 years old owning bad boy records. The Clive Davis relationship with him, they're saying it's very, very suspect. They gave him all this stuff, blackmailing all these people for all these years. And now all of it's coming out that he recorded Every room had cameras. This is in the in the lawsuit. So P Diddy almost had an element of Epstein. That's what, what they're, they're calling yeah. the Epstein of the of the hip hop. Tim, so obviously world. you're following the story very yeah, closely. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But um, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, here's the thing: in a in a white supremacist country, seriously, <laughs> for uh, a, an entertainer, uh, African American entertainer like P Diddy. To even get to live a life like Jeffrey Epstein, <laughs> it's winning <laughs> to me is yes. a huge win for the culture. I guess. I mean, I'm trying to put a nice, positive spin on mm -hmm. it. You know, this idea that here's a kid Your who grew up today is underprivileged, yeah. underprivileged. Yeah. And now look, he's got a mansion. He's blackmailing people. He's having <laughs> orgies. He's got the CIA. Everybody's on drugs. I mean, if you know, I he's, mean, he made you know, something. I know, truly, to be honest, I, yeah. I, I, this is an area I'm behind. I don't know anything well, about. I just, I'm a little offended, Vinny, because Why? I'm going to go on the record here and Diddy, say people have always said yeah. stuff about Diddy for a while. A while, yeah. You're yeah New Yorker, people you say know. stuff about Diddy for a while, and uh, I, I didn't hear. I don't know. I mean, there's probably something going on. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, you know what I mean? I don't want to slander people, but something seems. I mean, he's been accused now of five times in the, the yeah, past multiple, six months. To but, but by the way, but by the way, this know. is nothing new. Yeah. You know, nothing Not at all. Even when I had Greg Kading on, when I was trying to find out who killed Tupac, right? Yeah. Greg Kading was the the investigator, the detective that was going and trying to figure it out, and we put all the names and we put this whole like American gangster with all the yeah. different pictures, and he had to pick and choose. Everything kind of led back to Diddy. Uh, th hmm. That's what they're saying. The, the death of Biggie and the death of Tupac 100%. led back to Diddy, the Biggie renewing the contract, owning all the label, everything, and then Tupac and who was behind it. Guys, next thing you're going to tell me is that OJ probably killed two people. I don't know where you guys <laughs> are going with this right I now. I hate to be the I'm one just saying, you know. Vinny, yeah. you know, give me a chance here, Vinny. Yeah, my bad. I'm just saying, I don't know. You've, you've been in Florida how long now? Two years as of May. Okay, I've been here 43 years. Okay. Has Diddy, um, has Diddy launched any kind of like count? Attack is he's, uh, he's, he's counter suing. Let's PR let's see how the justice people. system prevails. But listen, what as somebody that gets invited, he's settled within yes. 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. So. what do you mean? As, with his ex, Cat, um, Cat, 30 million bucks. But as someone that gets invited sometimes to these types of parties on Star Island and Hibiscus Island and Palm Island and the Venetian Islands in Miami, I, you know, see something, say something, mind your own business. 
I don't want to get blacklisted from these parties, Vinny. My bad. So I'll anything that you're saying this is, does not stand for what I'm no, saying. I understand that. You're talking about chicks, hot chicks, fanny packs, drugs, partying. I'm just saying, I'm not saying I'm going. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't want to get blacklisted from I that party. Well, well, so I, let's just see what I, happens. I'm reporting what There's the lawsuit said. Like during problem. Art Basel, did he just... Keep my invitation coming. Oh, How about this? I'm not going to bring, bring, bring Vinny as my plus one. I would gladly say I would never want to go to a Diddy. And I'll say that to the... I'm Gucci. I'm I, don't, I, don't, I will gonna... tell you this. I don't know how much I care about this. The other day, I'm uh, uh, laying in bed, and I'm listening to R. Kelly. Okay? No joke. And nothing's going on. I'm just listening to R. Kelly. And I'm like, babe, do you realize how many hits oh, yeah. R. Kelly has? Play? What are you kidding me? I mean, you just kind of go through all of me like yeah. this. Yeah. Some and so many, right? And I go on Twitter and I say, let me see what people are saying about R. Kelly today. So I type in R. Kelly. And one guy says, I can't believe what R. Kelly did to me. Every what? time I listen to one of his songs, all I realize is he probably wrote that for an underage girl. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Now that Jesus. ruined it for you. Now that ruins it for you. Yeah. Mom, guys, <laughs> tell me no. no. Yeah. I don't know. True. Now you're going to, next thing you know, you're going to tell me that. Michael Jackson maybe diddled some kids, and when he wrote the song "Beat It" or "Thriller," all, all that there I'm was something is, on his Diddy, mind. Diddy, I'm I don't with stand you for this. Diddy's yeah. had a lot of stories for many years. For many years, yeah. What happens? It is what Shane Gillis. Did you like Shane Gillis being on amazing. SNL? It was amazing. It was a great moment. Yeah, it was hilarious. Great moment. You think sure. they're going back? You think they're um, going back to perhaps, getting yeah. away from woke? Pro I don't. I don't. It yeah, could be. Why do you think it was such Could a great be. moment, though? Because now they're trying to talk. Well, they're talking about getting recanceling him. One of the greatest comedians of all time, really. I mean, it just you know not being hired and then going back and hosting yeah. it and doing a great job. It's just a great moment. I I, I think I think it's a beautiful. moment. And it's moment. funny. It's what? funny winning. It's like. As a comic, I love watching funny people be funny, and mm -hmm. he was able to be funny well, on what, that show. What did you think? Because we got all grew up with that show. It's an important show. There's never been a show that's more important to comedy than Saturday Night Live. Without question, I've had little tit for tats with people on it, but I have yes. friends that work there. I've there's tons of talented people there. Um, it's the most important show for comedy that has ever existed. Correct. So I mean, you know, I don't think it should have any particular point of view politically. I know that it. Hard it certainly part, yeah. has and does, and there's not so much you can do about that to an extent because it's the result of the people that work there and who write mm -hmm. it and whatever. But there's still a lot of talent there. There's still, yeah. a, a, a you know, Marcelo's on it and a really yeah. funny guy. There's a lot of people yeah. I know that are really talented people there. I just think it was a great moment. I think it was a moment to be really happy about. Let me ask you about, I mean, I grew up, we, were, we all did stand-up comedy. Yeah. PBD, if you wanted to get out of the business world and, and actually delve into stand-up comedy, I think you'd crush it too. But, you know, whether it's the, the Belushis, whether it's the Adam Sandlers, the yeah. Will Ferrells, the greatness comes from there. But you would have to agree they have gone left and gone woke, whether it was the Sarah Palin thing, yeah. whether it's well, the uh, Kate McKinnon SNL thing. It's not just them. I, it's I not agree. just them. It's Every the late night comedy landscape, but he, of the traditional media. He, here's has my question, felt though. For, that pressure, yeah. From Shane Gillis, because I yeah. know we got to wrap up. But you know, the cancel culture is real. Yeah, you've avoided it somehow. Even though you beat up that lady at Cracker Barrel, we saw that. You yeah. know, yeah. she's okay. I heard. God bless um, her. Shane Gillis went on there. It was yeah. the least woke, most hilarious yeah, yeah, yeah. SNL I've seen in years. And Marcelo's yeah. like my little brother. I watch yeah. all this stuff. Like. Um, you know, now they're trying to recancel him because of his use of the R word. Yeah, but who's the doing it? Exactly. Thing, guys, 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 we have to really go, what is this, 10 people on Twitter? Yes. No one cares. No one cares. Everyone loved it. We can't give oxygen mm -hmm. to the people who've lost. The people that were against that guy lost. He proved he was amazingly funny. He proved he killed the show. They've lost don't give them any more oxygen. Yeah, fully agree. I don't know any of them in Palm Beach. What is the <laughs> None of them matter. Uh, these retard. bloggers. Oh. These, retard. These bloggers, these people, yeah. they're writing their crap. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. Don't give them oxygen. But you must agree, and I fully agree with that, that comedians are genuinely the barometer of free speech. It's like if you're going to start well, silencing I, I, comedians I, I, well, sure. don't silence from anyone. jokes. But here's the deal. I'm interested in free speech for everybody, for people that work at universities, for people that work in corporate America. Sure, for comedians, I want obviously comedians to be able to do whatever they want, but like, it's a bigger problem than comedy. It's a, it's an issue that we can't shut down discussions about important stuff, and if we do, we're going to have a problem. Awesome, Tim. Yeah. Great to have you, you on, Rob. Thank can we you. do me? Can we do we uh, put the link below the man's yeah. podcast? Go I subscribe watch you guys to Tim a lot. Dillon I'm show. A, I'm a big fan. I like it. I love your house. Yeah, 
I've watched this, the YouTube. You like the, the condo. It's a nice little. I like the whole thing. I mm -hmm. like the way you do it. I haven't seen your homes. I, 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 I don't care. Apartment. I don't care. <laughs> as He's fine I'm, first I'm class. We're fan. in the back in 38. I'm a big fan of you. I'm I appreciate a big fan you having me in, brother. You. Thank you. Anytime, brother. Take care, everybody. Too. Have a good weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I haven't been to your